<laughs> there we go. I press the button. Now we Ooh, we should be live. Hello, everyone. Hello. It's Law Crimes. God, we're talking we about go. what's old world slander is aggressive right now. I it's yeah. well, it's not slander. It's GW's production quality slander. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the pain. Yeah. It's no longer... No, there's no longer new armies like they promised, Colin. Are you happy about that? Uh, I'm going to continue coping because they said <laughs> that there are no plans for them in the near future, which means the far future near. will give me my Cathay. God damn it. <laughs> oh, they're not going to do the... Cathay or Kislev? No, they both said no. <laughs> which is worth... There's, oh a, there's a Cathay army book out there. They made it for yeah, total war. <laughs> my gosh. Oh. In the grim dark future, there is only delays. <laughs> it's, it's the grim dark right now. Yeah. Huh? Damn. Oh uh, welcome, people. This is another episode of uh, Iceberg Law Crimes. Uh, I should mention this. I've actually remembered to mention at the beginning. We actually are on Spotify as well, so people want to yeah. listen to us offline. Uh, they can. But today we're continuing something we actually haven't talked about in a while. In but a it's. While. A continuation of the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy Legions. So we'll talk about all the Legions before. We're currently covered nearly, I think nearly about half of them. About I think about half, yeah. Oh, and it. don't worry. I'm but sorry. we kind of we're grouping together today the Shattered Legions. So these are the ones who essentially got sidelined and mid law. We won't lie in some parts, but other ones they got some cool little side bit characters. But they were just this is this is background stuff that most people probably haven't learned or followed. So we're going to uh, hopefully explore more of that. Though uh, mm -hmm. I do believe I think we're going to start with the question of the week, though, Colin. That will be <laughs> interesting. I've heard it was interesting. Yeah, there's some just from good previous ones. episode on the. I was... um, Eldar Cross. Oh, yeah, but thank you, Andy, for having my back in the poll. You can see the two reasons the bet's not made right now. <laughs> <laughs> you assholes. <laughs> uh, but no, no, the question of the week uh, from the last time. What a uh, what what path would you create for the Eldar? Uh, there's some interesting ones. Uh, I'm gonna go with the oh, no. you know this this one's a nice and simple one. Uh, at Pinky Prime seven eight seven seven. Hashtag path. I'd make a path of ward to find the best lore for the Eldar. And you know what? I think the Eldar need their Matt Ward to just <laughs> give them, they, they need a bit of favoritism, man. They've been Truly. hurt. I mean, I as someone who also enjoys a faction or a sub faction who get basically next to no lore, I feel such sympathy as an iron hand enjoyer. <laughs> so... It's yeah, half the craft worlds have no lore, the other half have uh, well, bad lore, <laughs> bad lore. Just getting killed. Us, more. Bad <laughs> I was skimming through the iron hands today and talking about them as only a third of the content today. It's going to be about 90% of their lore anyway, so that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as an iron hands player, you're at least a space marine player, which means you are university yeah. loved by GW. Yeah, no, we're so, not. Yeah. Do you know what? We got a, <laughs> our character model, model is iron excuse me, say, wait, wait, wait. wait. Your what model? The yeah. one character yeah. model we have. You're, 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 it's that mean. Yeah. Uh -huh. You, you want to hear models? it? You want to hear it? The one character model we do have, though, doesn't Stands appear in, in any novel. Doesn't. <laughs> it's not even like the chapter master. So it's like this guy. This okay. guy has a character yeah, model. That's this crazy. guy does not yeah. understand the life of a chaos space marine player. It's How? <laughs> Cap chapter master two Sean from the salamanders also to my knowledge doesn't have a model the salamanders have two character models yes yeah, got vulcan and 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 yeah and they're captains like why isn't two Sean got it anyway look at him i'm uh right, you know, every I'm, chaos I'm, space I'm, mean... I'm afraid i can't hear you down there for my skaven being a legacy <laughs> army <laughs> yeah, for real. although have you seen the the leak recently i have god i'm a new skaven oh. or what yeah, maybe Age of Sigma. Mm. Fourth edition is the edition of the Red. Uh, what if I dwell on this too long? I'm not going to stop talking you about Skaven. You're going to turn to the Great Horny one at that point. <laughs> you better believe it. Oh, man. Uh, uh, but that was <laughs> yeah, that was the first one. Uh, second question from Anarian Targaryen six nine seven three. I'm sorry you made your oh. username based around Game of Thrones. I, I, <laughs> I yeah. Uh, I, I wish, I hope you can heal from <laughs> what they did to that show. Uh, but anyway, uh, hashtag path, the path of the white strike. A path where I just kill elves and starve <laughs> the dark friends. Nice. 
Nice. Uh, and become the biggest elf hater that doors will tell me to take it down a notch. Dude, that's true. <laughs> Kill every wow. mirror you find. <laughs> God. Uh, yeah, we should do an Elder Scrolls something at some point. Because we all know, I mean, the amount of my brain was wasted. I've, I've got <laughs> useless knowledge about how to play and complete a run of Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, how is a Skyrim <laughs> gamer? I have played too much unmodded and modded Skyrim <laughs> to justify it. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. and then the and then the last one, the uh, oh no, the true banger, uh, rarest Pepe three eight one five. Oh, of course, I would create the path of cope. <laughs> its purpose would be to keep morale up by justifying every L, so it counts as a W. And Colin would be its Phoenix Lord. <laughs> nice, that's awesome. Uh, I will happily take on the goal of elf propaganda master. <laughs> the lore of oh dear. Cope. Copium. I didn't need that, but that was funny. It's actually also, really cool it's... that they lost, by the way, because Bobby Bob <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. But, uh, but, but uh, good job, everyone. You didn't bring up fucking VTubers for once. I'm very <laughs> proud of you all. <laughs> well, everyone's maturing. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. Oh no, don't don't die on us. Eli is going out. Oh no. <laughs> no. He, he literally before we started was like, I've ripped my shirt and now he's dying. It was the egg he ate months ago. <laughs> oh back. man. Don't don't mention the egg that we do because we move past it. <laughs> <laughs> so has nightmares about the egg. <laughs> Uh, I just believe what's the next? We have another question of the week, so people put the hashtag and stuff in the comment section. Colin, remember what we put for the uh next question? I think it is. Yes, it is. Uh, I don't did I don't think we got a hashtag. Uh, hashtag shatter. Let's just put it. All in right, let's one, go. Yeah. Hashtag shatter. Uh, what would you add to Lorehammer War that would break it? So you know, would you pick pick your Warhammer setting and just throw something into it that's going to ruin everything? I just I I thought something was just so like inappropriate. I actually can't say it's do with the emperor getting kinky. So I'm just going to completely <laughs> ignore okay. that. Dude, uh, <laughs> I would feel feel free to get degenerate in the comments. Like within reason, <laughs> within reason, you filthy scum. I would uh, add dwarf slayers to the leagues of Otan for no reason than it would break Hal's dreams of them being a unique faction. <laughs> 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 That'd be awesome. The Votan are about as as original as like the net, you know, like a cereal flavor that's clearly the same as the original. Like, you know, they put like original on something, <laughs> like just to like <laughs> separate these things, yeah. but they're just clearly the same thing. We, uh, we've, we've got a donation from Donkey Man USA. <laughs> nice. I love that name. <laughs> uh, speaking of Skaven, Colin, you've spelled my name with one too many L's, you bastard. Uh, <gasps> thank you for the five bucks. Uh, you. You've convinced me to thank start you. listening to Gotrick and feel you also spelled Gotrick wrong. Uh, on my <laughs> long shifts. This guy's ruthless. <laughs> Praise the great horn rat, silliest clown. I'm reading the thankful books now, so hell yeah. Mm. Nice. I would well, want to see how does it life feel that Banquil has more books than the Iron Hands currently do? <laughs> <laughs> He's got three of them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Holy cow. He's I mean, the, horn, to, he's the horn fair, rat's silliest goober. Mm -hmm. Iron Hands will eventually get, a, like, you know, when they've done a release for every single sub faction ever, then they'll eventually, like, in the year 2035, they'll eventually. <laughs> yeah, that's what I keep telling myself, buddy. <laughs> do Iron Hands something. I've been waiting for every other Chaos Space Marine Legion to come out. When the, uh, when the headless corpse happened. of Ferris Manus <laughs> is revived. <laughs> <laughs> and he's on a quest for to find his head. <laughs> you'll see it. You, you guys oh, will be. Man. You'll be. You'll be you're looking, looking silly. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really cool that they don't have any lore right now because uh, uh, in the future it'll be it'll be really cool, guys. <laughs> <laughs> they do <laughs> have lore. Guys, the path of cope is real. <laughs> I'm already joining the path. We're, we're all Maybe followers of yeah, the path of cope. Hell's an exarch. No, I, I, I got some white. I got some white scars books in the Horus Heresy. I'm fine. Uh, Rosario Khan is real. Hey, I got yeah, an anthology. Bro, <laughs> well, I'm a I'm a Lucius the Eternal fan. All I can do is cope. All right, like you got a you just an animation. You got an animation of it. Doesn't he die in that? Well, he does, but then he like completely destroys I'm the exorcist, and everyone's like, "That's mad. bullshit." And you're like, "Oh." Unfortunate. Donkey Man USA <laughs> with a fucking throat punch. 
<laughs> Thank you for the other five. Yeah, I, I spelled your name person. wrong. Give you that extra L for being an Eldar. Fit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, guys, you can't spell Eldar without an L. Yeah. Yeah. Truly. Well, wow. Um, I, no, that's not going to work. That's the opposite of what I want. Never mind. Continue. <laughs> well, we're going to start off with the law here. Just a, the brief thing that. You know what's great about being human is the many things that unite us and today that what unites all these three legions which is the raven guard salamanders and iron hand is that they perhaps sticking on the theme of l's they took the biggest l all in, relevant. In, in in probably the biggest l in the entire great crusade and horus heresy so uh i think andy's gonna briefly just explain what isvan 5 is obviously for the uninitiated yeah. honestly super cool they put the three legions no one cares about and broke the start of the heresy <laughs> yeah yeah good move um, honestly but, but we do before, before we start we... we do have a donation yes with a, like. with a goofy qu <laughs> is it question the answer to this question seems pretty obvious but <laughs> hypothetical <laughs> calling with a lot of uh, l's okay. if you can <laughs> if you can get rid of your diabetes with zero repercussions whatsoever would you do it? Love from Alberta. Thank you for the, for the, the five dollars. I'm also in Alberta. Oh, yeah, Why wouldn't you? Would Why? Because <laughs> a friend asked me that once, and I made a video about it. Oh, uh, I see. <laughs> That's funny. At this point, I think I owe him like fifty rounds of drinks for how much super chats I've gotten about the fucking thing. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> My brother gets um, that question a lot because he's also type one as well as Colin here. So would I, would I get rid of it for free? Yes, I don't like <laughs> medical debt. Why, <laughs> here's a question why for you, would Colin. you? Could would you get rid of your diabetes if you uh, you basically sealed the the pact with GW that we we'd never get any more Eldar law ever again? Would it be worth it? There's yeah, none to yeah, start with. Beat. Come on, right. <laughs> it's, already, it's basically the same thing. All they do is make them take L's after it's, L's. It's anyway. a current yeah, situation. So it, means, so it means like there's no more of them losing. Yeah, I would take yeah. it. Fine, they'll just go live in Age of Sigmar land where it's the L's like, are actually. Yeah. It's just like our like um, what if things where like you can double jump. Is it like if you get rid of mm. diabetes, but every time you double jump, you shit yourself? <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. Well, thankfully, oh, I can't double jump, so I'll get rid of the diabetes regardless. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fun. A fact about insulin i found out the other day uh if you if you exercise it uh it, it absorbs blood glucose from your body so you don't need the insulin for it i don't know. i just learned that and i think that's pretty neat that's why one I, thing that i've learned from the last two years of school so, so that's why exercising like, makes you go low mm. you can cure diabetes by you can't cure it but you're like exercising ever is that the mm -hmm. idea? No, no, the other way around. Because oh, you, can you don't have by exercise. Yeah, you don't have so the you insulin. Run, you can cure diabetes. That's amazing. <laughs> you can, you can, you can treat part of it. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> the amount of energy required to constantly <laughs> maintain yeah. that not having insulin would be. I need to be running twenty four seven. D DJ Beast in the comments. We don't need to answer that question. <laughs> End times. <laughs> oh God, would you get rid of oh, diabetes man. if you could? Oh, get uh, an oh, okay, yeah, Elder, <laughs> read the end time, basically. Fuck, fuck you, moving on. <laughs> um, anyway, um, we, can't stall, five. we can't stall uh, the, the, the Broken Boys any longer. So we can't really talk about any of these legions without first mentioning Istvan 5. Um, it's still pretty fresh in my mind because I've recently done a video on it recently, but long story short, uh, Horus Heresy begins... Warmaster Horus betrays the Imperium, and before anyone really knows what's going on, he goes, right, I'm going to send the Space Wolves to attack the Thousand Suns, so they're out of the way. Blood Angels, they're out of the way. Ultramarines, they're out of the way. Dark Angels, they're out of the way. Sc White Scars are somewhere. They're out of the way. Oh, no. Nathaniel, Nathaniel Garrow, this bitch, he's gone back to warn the Emperor. I don't like that. Rogel Dawn's having a hissy fit, and he's like, right, we need to get back at the traitors. Fulgrim goes to meet with Ferris Manus, the guy in charge of the Iron Hands, and says, come and join the traitors, it's cool. And he goes, that's cringe, and betrays him. So, long story short, to get the reprisal on Horus's rebellion, the Emperor, through Rogaldorn, sends three legions, and then a further four legions to hopefully crush the traitor rebellion before it has any like momentum to get properly started. Uh, before we go any further, we got a donation from Angry Homunculus for five pounds. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I'm going to call out 
Oh, good. I'm going to call out <laughs> Arthur's white scar hate hatred by the fact that my extended family surname is Shug Chugtai, which That's comes from very cool. Chagatai. Very cool. I must admit, he did a tier list and he didn't put white scars in S tier, so I just said I bounced. I was like, Sad. I'm out. If I yeah, could live another life, life, if I could live a, another life, I would choose to be Mongolian. Hmm. Just, just throwing that out there. All the I things would, I never uh, thought I'd hit. like. That's no. just like <laughs> <laughs> one of the <laughs> statement of the day. Medieval Total War Two made me racist. <laughs> Quote Jeez. of the day, boys. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm tired. Um, I'm, just, I'm just gonna go go to Mongolia and get a hawk. And I'd a, love, I'd love to just be oh a my horse gosh. lord. Is it for real. <laughs> um. So yeah, it's, it's, it's like the masculine urge to go be a horse lord yeah, at the drop they, of a hat. Have you seen their old president? I don't know if he still is, but he's jacked. The most jacked <laughs> presidents you'll ever see. That's what we should like get uh, politics. Like you can't be a politician unless you're like hedge. That's the only. Yeah, it worked for Arnold Schwarzenegger. Come on, Colin. <laughs> so our American politics be like no, only bodybuilders I, now. You think yeah, I? It's, it's you all think the Colin's American shoulders. people have anything to actually do with our politics? <laughs> <laughs> Those corpses in Washington are gonna end up in charge no matter what we do. Yeah, for <laughs> real. <laughs> oh, we have another never... donation. You guys have been very generous. Like... Thank you. Thank hey you, everyone. Brothers. Thank you, Colin. Another, a lot of Colin call outs today. <laughs> I'm on the Zombie Slayer. Should I carry on reading Ken Slayer or and Slayer, or something else that Gotrick or Thankwall is in? P.S. Death for the knife use. All right. You didn't Bless need you, to thank add you that one. $20. Yeah. But thank you. <laughs> thank you. In a video uh, game. It's fine now. <laughs> if uh, Once you get to the thing with the end, you know what? It, she's in Total Warhammer now. You know what? Once she becomes a vampire, go read Ulrich's books. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but, fair enough. Yeah. So, East Von 5. Let's go back to the Intercept. So, basically. <laughs> please. Please. Yeah, quickly. quickly. Um, so, basically. Horus and his other traitor allies have purged their own legion. So you've got the Emperor's Children, the uh, World Eaters, the Death Guard, and of course the Sons of Horus. So they've actually kind of halved the numbers of, well, probably less than half the numbers of all their legions because they've been fighting with each other. And the Loyalists did a good job of fighting back, so they actually didn't get as much done as they were hoping in one swift move. So the Emperor says to Rogal Dawn, like, you're in charge of the military. I've kind of, There's kind of something going wrong in the back rooms. Like, what's that noise? Like, nothing. Um, We're having some no technical demons. difficulties. No no demons. No, uh, I, I, Was that Magnus? No, you didn't see anything. Um, so Rogal Dawn's like, right, I'm angry now. I'm going to send some of my men. We're going to send the Iron Hands. We're going to send the Salamanders, the Raven Guard, the Night Lords, the Iron Warriors, the Alpha Legion, and the Word Bearers. We're going to send eight legions. We're going to crush these traitor upstarts. Um, he was just throwing shit at the wall to just crush them. He was like, "Let uh, these are the guys we can gather in around everyone else. Like the Ultramarines and Dark Angels, and stuff, they're too far away. Let's go smash their heads in." Basically, um, the operation in North Korea where they went to go cut down a tree. If everyone remembers the <laughs> I do remember that. Yes. that. Um, but a few things go wrong. First of all, uh, Rogal Dawn's contingent get lost in the war, um, so that Ooh. sucks. That, that's what starts off with the Battle of Fahl. He sends a third of his entire legion, which is like, I think, 100,000 men or maybe a bit less. And they they, they can't make the battle. Like, sorry, guys. Uh, uh, traffic. So, okay. <laughs> no worries. Um, who's in charge of this assault? It's, it's Ferris Manus. It's everyone's favorite Primarch, Ferris Manus, who does have a neck. Um, <laughs> <in charge. laughs> now. I, well, he you know. <laughs> he has a big well he he had a big hammer and Shout then my neck and clobbered him with it and there's a weird thing in the artwork where you see ferris like even his model on this one he's swinging a hammer he's like he shouldn't have that in he the is a sword fulgrim takes it away from him and he he smashes fire blade and he reforges mm -hmm. it yeah but it's that's had, really cool yeah and that'd be weird that for another tabletop yeah. i'm the only person who's had that artwork <laughs> the official like the actual mm -hmm. only artwork of the Proper like jewel. Accurate, yeah. I've, I'm the, the only other person one on this one, he's got a freaking wrench. I'm like, why are you attacking yeah. Fulgrim with a wrench? I know. This is in a carpool. Because it um, goes hard. It does go pretty hard. Like, I just wonder what it's called. Like, this is Philip, <laughs> my legendary wrench of war. Yeah. And he should have made Philip. that. should have made Philip. that a relic for the tech marines nowadays. Exactly. Yeah. That would have made sense. Um, but either way, so Ferris Manus is made in charge because he's kind of angry because Fulgrim <laughs> was bit. like, just a bit. He was like, you're my best bro. Um, do you mind? Should we, should we betray dad? 
no, and that's cringe. And then gets bopped, and then it, like Fulgrim kills pretty much all of his honor guard apart from his first captain. He's angry, so he's like, I'm leading the charge. And to be fair, Ferris Manus and the Iron Hands are really well respected because they've got one of the biggest legions. Ferris Manus is a, is a taskmaster, and they get stuff done. Like they're they're kind of similar to the the Dark Angels, except less empathy and more just get it done civilian casualties don't matter if we can get it done quickly like fine so he's in charge and the Less first wave is than the dark angels is impressive <laughs> exactly. um so the first wave is iron hands and then two sm two two very much smaller legions like the, the two smallest legions other than the white scars who are like third place like everyone knows there aren't many salamanders and raven guard in comparison to the other legions but it's an okay start We'll send these three legions in first. We'll combat the four legions on Istvan. And then we've got four other legions, even though the Imperial Fist can't be here, backing them up. They make planet fall. Um, they're doing all right. They're pushing through. Horus is in a big chair in his office, <laughs> just watching it all happen. You know, Mortari and Angron and uh, Fulgrim are, are cutting swathes through the Iron Hand Sallies and Raven Guard, whilst Vulcan, Korax, and Ferris are also fighting through. And it's kind of they're pitting, pitting against each other, but nothing's really happening. Oh, look, good. Reinforcements. Good. We'll have this sorted. Um, unfortunately, Lorgar is a person, and he's <laughs> been uh, whispering to, you know, the Primarch of Murderers, the Primarch of Incels, the Primarch <laughs> of... Oh, did I? Did I not? <laughs> yeah, come on, he's... come on. <laughs> can, you, can you guess which one All I right. mean? Conrad <laughs> Gers? Well, you said murderers. <laughs> The twin Murder man, yeah. Big tortoise man. Um, so yeah, all of them are kind of going through their own thing. You know, Kurz is a bit of a dick, just Wait, in what, general. Who, who's Turtle Man? Perturabo. Perturabo. Oh. oh <laughs> he has so much armor, it's ridiculous. Yeah, he's more arm he's more machine than that. That's fair. Um he Perturabo's already like torched his own homeworld in secret and killed his sister. A grade, A grade. Oh. Hey, he, on that, he, he on that grind, or he on that grind. It was a busy um, weekend. He sucks. <laughs> Lorgar's already chaos. He's been chaos for a while now. He was he did it before it was cool. Um, and Alpharius is just like, will I be loyal? Will I be? I'm Alpharius. So yeah, like that's Alpharius. <laughs> that how Colin hears I it suck. every time. Yeah, like that's that. about how Alpha <laughs> lore enters my brain, to be honest. And so, um, basically, you couldn't pick a worse collection of miscreants. For a loyalist second assault, <laughs> like seriously, we're gonna put the murderer legion, and you know the sneaky legion who who would be like really good at doing a backstab, and the like religious zealot legion who have been a bit like they already in the last few years, and the iron warriors who are just rubbish. So it's like <laughs> okay, come on, come on. <laughs> they well the, the thing is that their their whole shtick is like. Oh, Dad says I have to. So anyway, like <laughs> they all make Planet Fall. Sally's Raven Guard, Iron Hands. They're a good combo. They've worked well before in the past. The the three Primarchs get on like really well, and they're making some headway. But they but three against four. Even though the traitors are kind of diminished, it's not going to work. And they're like, oh, good. Here come the Iron Warriors. They'll go into the meat grinder. Alpharis does do whatever he does. Um, word word bearers will do some like cheerleading. And the Night Lords will skin, skin a few traders. That that'd be fine. Uh, only except they surround all the 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 loyalists into this this space called the Urgal Depression. And then they turn their guns on them and they start shooting them in the back. And they're like, "What?" And what happens in the next few hours Urgal, is about a big depression now. Mm -hmm. A big depression in in about the span of three hours. It's something like nearly I think it's one hundred and fifty thousand Astartes get gunned down. From the loyalist a ranks. It's a tough read. It's harder to read than Istvan three, in my opinion. Yeah, because because the thing is, like Istvan is like, oh, there's like there, there's resistance and it's protracted for months, like three hours. The legions are broken. They're it done. It takes like ninety days before the end of the battle, technically. But right. ninety two of those days is just skirmishes. But that first three hours of that first day is just not good. By the end of the whole battle, two hundred thousand Astartes on the loyalist ranks are dead. So that's a lot. They also uh, threw a nuke in there randomly. Yeah, they oh, yeah. actually nuke Vulcan because the Iron Warriors oh, are yeah. fighting him. And they're like, this is too much Cash effort. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Now, didn't, the big button. And didn't uh, 
Ferris and the two other guys jumped the gun, didn't they go in earlier than they were supposed well, to? Well, this is the thing. They Ferris didn't retreat. Jumped the... yeah. Ferris was, he saw Fulgrim and the Empress Troy's like, oh, I'm rallying for a fight. So he actually ran ahead. Then uh, okay. they get cut off. Then Vulcan and Korax, when they get betrayed, Korax is like, we need to like retreat and then redeploy. Whereas Vulcan says, no, we need to, we need to, we need to combine and dig in and then push back. And so they can't agree. So then they split up and then mm. Vulcan gets bombarded before he gets nuked. And Korax is like, oh no. <laughs> so Korax is pr pretty much the only one who's in charge within like a few hours. And for the next 90 or so days, he's leading like raiding attacks. He's doing all these things to try and preserve what's left. Vulcan gets nuked from orbit, but survives because he's a perpetual. Ferris Manus doesn't have a neck anymore. <laughs> and that's a shame. Uh, and also the Iron Hands have taken like, if the Iron Hands over, have like over 100,000 Astartes, they don't anymore. The other two legions were small enough already. And after a few uh, few days, four or five of the legions fall back. And then I think it's like the Sons of Horus, World Eaters, and, and I think the Iron Warriors, and maybe some word bearers are just picking off the survivors. And this causes the moniker to be known as the Shattered Legions, because at the end of the war, no one took bigger casualties per percentage. Like, I know the Ultramarines lost like 100,000 Astartes at Calf, but they still had like 150 to spare. Whereas every other one of these legions, they lost way more men than anyone else, and they couldn't function as a legion anymore. Calf was uh, an act of self-defense. <sighs> oh, <no>. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. So, yeah, we should also mention this. In, with the Shattered Legion as well, all of them, like when they would continue on to fight, like pretty much their entire legion was decorating the traitor's ships mm. for like the rest of the heresy. Which is like <laughs> the, I found a re the one like really properly sad bit is like when Vol um when Ferris like gets beheaded and he dies, like they just start picking like they literally like are picking apart their bodies mm. for like Yeah, it's like it's pretty like horrific. They're like and if yeah. you're an iron hand you're like you know, trying to survive, and you're like, that's literally my Primark being picked oh, apart like man. a vulture. Fulgrim for his fair has got to be like... the saddest fight in the Horus Heresy, surely. Mm. Sad how there, quick it is. There weren't any I mean, more, there weren't any well, bigger bros than that fighting in the Horus Heresy, were there? I it's mean, like Mortarian versus the Khan, you know, you uh, they don't really Horus care about each other in the first um, place. Rogel Dorn, first, that that one's kind of sad, but it's also poorly written, so whatever. But, yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, well, the, the only thing was, you mentioned about like how they picked apart like Ferris's corpse. Colin, to give you context, that's like if Rabute Gilliman was killed, they like picked his calculator out from his pocket. Like, put that back! Put that back, he needs that! Um, <coughs> it's sticky. Took the moral from his head. Um, so yeah. Um, so now we, we've got three legions that are completely useless in terms of being a standing army for the Legionis of Stardis. Um And this is the, the only time in the heresy where the, an, an entire legion is taken unawares in its entirety. Like, Istvan Free is sad because it's brother fighting brother, but like, Dropside Massacre is really sad because it's just like, oh, it's like, it's like you, you, we're, we're gone. There's, there's nothing left. Like, the Iron yeah. Hands are like, we've got no law left. Oh, mm. that's a shame. And Damn it. one of the main points <laughs> about these legions is that <laughs> even in current uh, year 40k law, because of this event, you don't really hear much about them. For the rest of the setting, hmm. that's how. Well, don't have many successes, chapters. Oh, and and before this, they took the Alpha Legion L, right? Deliverance losses before this, is it? No, no, it's not. No, it's after. after. No, it's after. following because yeah, the, the, the Alpha Legion start like <laughs> cutting the Raven Guards' faces off and wearing them to like infiltrate ah, yeah, the survivors' yeah, yeah. ranks of course, and of go course back it's to after home it. base. Sorry, yeah, obviously. And then Korax is like, "I'm going to rebuild the Legion," and then the Alpha Legion. I don't are, like, think so. <laughs> are you though? Um, the one did they go anywhere? Appreciate. Have they <laughs> mentioned any other times that the Alpha Legion has basically Primaris Marines? Because I don't actually remember hearing that in any of the books I've read afterwards. It's just like a fact that is they there. had Primaris <laughs> Marines because they stole it from the Raven Guard. They didn't steal Primaris. Not prim Marines. Yeah, but it was well, like they, 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 a version. They stole the um, not called Primaris. The Emperor's pro pure Primark gene seed. They stole. Yeah, the Primark. Yeah, yeah. Pat they Sang like yeah, it's it was, a pretty important. It was given the Raven Guard. It's given the Raven Guard the ability to make like better Marines, basically. Or they can, in, no, they like, could, large amounts, right? They could make Rapid. Space Marines instead of having to do 
implementation like over years yeah they could do it over a mass a matter of months them out. Mm -hmm. yeah so they, so have, like, they, they could do like a full basically. process yeah they could they could speed it up and then the emperor was like mm -hmm. okay i'll let you have that you know special thing but they never got to use it so yeah uh, so this is so it's another Plot. reason <laughs> why the alpha legion is somehow the strongest legion and the goofiest legion at the same time Sweet it takes like three of them to do it. I think that's they... what I would add. I finally figured out my question of the week answer. I think I would add a bomb that kills every <laughs> Alpha Legion member at once. Oh my gosh. Oh dear. Just get rid um, of them. Just have one author. Just have one Alpha Legion author. No, have zero I think that would break the law would be uh, Alpharius is actually Kegarak. <laughs> Uh, you know yeah, you know what? I can live with that. That one's okay. Because that would make like sense. Out, I don't like it. Successes. What's going on? I don't As know. the Phoenix mm. Lord of the Path of the Cope, I have <laughs> this option. <laughs> um, Jeez. So yeah, uh, but that's basically a, a very br like brief overview of of East Farm Five, and that's why they're called the Shattered Legions. Um, we have a donation from Jeremy Golden for five dollars. Thank you. Very Thank much. you, brother. Thank, Thank you. you saying right around this time there is a group of recruits on deliverance who would go on to found the modern raptors chapter yeah mm -hmm. well there's the thing a lot of these with these three in particular they don't have many uh successes and they only tend to have like one standout one each it's like raven guards you've got the raptors iron hands you've got the um exactly the brazen <laughs> maybe Not and then um, salamanders you've got the dark most. krakens i guess like mm -hmm. iron hand successors are the saddest part of iron hands <laughs> there's only the one cool one which is um i can't even remember the name of the, the one that the, 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 the one that the adeptus mechanic has made are the cool ones oh the sons of medusa no they're also uh, cool. there's they're also cool ones actually. oh i remember it. there's one called but the there's iron one of the admex made something like that yeah oh. they're like the holy yeah. trinity of fair's man is the emperor and the omnissiah or something like that the Iron uh, Wardens are a cool one. I think I mentioned it before, where like their only role is to essentially cordon off this specific planet that has a really <laughs> advanced Xenos race on it. Mm. Yeah. And then basically they worried like if the Tyranids ever managed to get up to this planet, it would basically make the Tyranids unstoppable. So they mm. base their whole chapter is designed to contain this one mm. Xenos is that race. The Iron that... Lords. I think Iron Lords, Iron Warden, something like that. They just start They're... throwing exterminatus at it, but who am I to... It's a shame they have, like, a terrible there. paint scheme, though. Yeah, then there's... Most of their second founding chapters are pretty depressing, as they have yeah. all, like, one paragraph of lore, generally, and, and some compared of them, like, to the... Cool other cool stuff. ones. Like, I like the Knights of Byzantium, which are, like, purple Iron Hand successors. Like, they look cool. They got any lore. It's like... Dude, Byzantine Empire reference that. goes hard. <laughs> cool. There's, like, a horse, yeah. a seahorse thing. Um... Hmm. Like a mermaid if it were a horse, if that makes sense. Not like a seahorse. It's like a horse top and then has a tail. It's weird. Anyway, um, so without further ado, should I go into some detail with one of the three? Yeah, we'll um, start with uh, <laughs> the now, best we'll say, Horus Heresy books. <laughs> oh, well, here's the thing. I will say to the chat that we aren't going to be going super in-depth because we want to, again, one day do like a proper like, Here's the Salamanders in its entirety. Here's the Iron Hands, blah, blah, blah. But this is an overview because it's like Great Crusade era versions of these legions. So starting off with the Salamanders, 18th Legion. Um, not much is known about what they did during the Great Crusade, but they were known as the Dragon Warriors, which is not to be confused with the Dragon <laughs> Warriors, who are a Chaos Space Marine war band. <laughs> Completely nice. different thing. Or the Dragon Warrior from Kung Fu. Kung Fu. Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> you... uh, what, what bootleg version are you watching? Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> it's Jack Black. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, think, I actually love like that Dragon film. Warriors everywhere. Um, so yeah, they were originally. And the thing about the Salamanders is they're they're a bit of a weird chapter because they were they were similar to the Space Wolves and the Alpha Legion in that they were part of the Trefoil or Trifoil, which were three legions made specifically for a very particular purpose. And the, you know, the Space Wolves were like exterminate, not exterminators, they were like executioners. They were like hunting packs that would kill specific targets. Alpha Legion, oh, I'm going to be sneaky. No one really knows what the Salamanders were made specifically to do. It could have been good hugs for all we know. Like, we're going to make one Space Marine Legion that's kind of nice people. Like, they're compassionate. Okay, maybe that's it. But it's never really explained exactly what it is. Um, well, they just never got to the point where they, the Emperor could unveil that purpose. 
Mm. Um, though, mm. to be fair, the beginning of their service, they had a, a very bloody reputation. Uh, they had a battle called the Assault of the Tempest Galleries. They went from 20,000 Astartes to one. So they lost 19,000 men. <laughs> but, <What? laughs> but the Imperium was like, I like them. They're pretty cool for some reason. Um, they were quickly rebuilt following this victory, and they were well happier with how they they did stuff. Um, but since this point, they were only ever deployed piecemeal, and they were support. They were a support legion for the uh, Imperial Army. So they, they didn't really often work with other legions. They'd actually work with the mortal human guardsmen, um, and usually they'd be like. Oh, they'd, they'd be dropped in at the back line of the enemy when the Imperial Army's fighting. They'll go on the other side and they'll do a pincer movement. And because of this, they bolstered a really good reputation with mortals where they're like, I like these Dragon Warriors. These are good guys. You know, they're here for, like, I don't ever, I don't ever work with the Ultramarines. I've heard they're cool, but I've never seen one. I like these guys. You know, they saved my buddy Kevin. You know, cool. Bonding. Um, I will say we also got a $4.99 donation from That Grey Shark. Thank you, my brother. relationships. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, my relationship status is like Iron Hands successor chapters. Law. <coughs> Sad. Non-existent. Wow. So Rip. Did himself oh, and the whole dirty. Also, from uh, we got a report. question from Crimson Glory about the streaming times. Uh, when the semester is done in like one month, we'll go back to regular times. I just have a class at the regular time that I can only skip every once in a while. So. Education is <laughs> good. To see you, Crimson Glory, though. Good to see you, brother. Yeah, good to see you. Um, so yeah, and and the only other thing to really mention about the Salamanders from the Great Crusade, um, because of their massive losses at the beginning of their service, they never really grew to a size alike to the other legions, uh, and they were always kept in reserve. They never really went to the forefront of compliance as they were support. They were they were specifically always support rather than. We didn't go, go fight a war. It's like, no, we're going to bolster an existing force. They weren't um, bad, though. They just had a problem of self-sacrifice, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah they, they were they were kind of glory-hungry, <laughs> but also compassionate. They were essentially and... the Team Fortress 2. Of... For, for, for a military, <laughs> trying to get yourself killed in honorable battle is generally not conducive to success. Well, not like, they weren't trying it's... to get themselves killed, but then, say, like, where other legions would, you know, oh, you know, let the civilians or the mortal soldiers yeah. die well because we have to retreat because a good tactical choice they'll they go no fighting we'll with fight squishy together humans. yeah and it's like we're not we're not fighting like other legions it's like oh there's they're all dying in droves i guess we should too to fit in <laughs> um, they're bros yeah, pressure is real um however they eventually found their primarch vulcan everyone's favorite big lad he's huge stomp um, stomp stomp, stomp. Uh, he was found on the world of Nocturne, which uh, when he was on this planet, he he was adopted by uh, by a smith who's a cool guy. I can't remember the name off, off the top of my head. But there's a weird thing with Nocturne. Uh, the Drukari, known as Dusk Wraiths, kept raiding the planet. And at about the age of five or whatever it was, when Vulcan was already like taller than any of us and was like muscled and like, ooh, you don't look for, I am. He was like, I've had enough of this. Um... Dad, grab the hammer. I'm gonna go like beat them up, and so he he basically just got like all the guys on Nocturne to say no. Actually, raiding is cringe, and they fought back <laughs> the Drukari. I think they found like a portal on their home planet where they were just like dropping in through. I think it was like the bottom of Mount Deathfire. Yeah, there was like was a Drukari a Webway Eldar. Gate, Webway Gate, and they were like, oh, that's where they could. Oh, bash, 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 and they they managed to drive off the uh, the Dusk Wraiths. And they were really chuffed about this. Great, we can we can smith in peace. And so <laughs> to celebrate this, they had this event called, you know, I can't remember, it was like the Celebrations of Nocturne. And then this guy called the Outlander appeared. And they're like, this guy's weird. What do you mean? He's like, oh, look at him. He's, just, he's like, he's white. It's like, oh, yes, he is. He's very pale, considering, you know, we live next to this massive sun that's like irradiating us all. And we've got like the... And especially Vulcan with like the glowing red eyes, like that guy looks a bit weird, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, it turns it's wearing out it's crops Emperor. with the uh, socks and <laughs> <laughs> cargo shorts. Turns <laughs> it's up in a tie dye. Obvious. Like, what's this guy's fashion sense? What's going on here? Um, so yeah, this this guy turns up and he's like, "Hey guys, I'll uh, I'll 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 compete in the the celebrations with them." And, and like, I'm sure Eli would like the the celebrations. They're like lifting weights and they're proving how strong they are. Pretty epic. And then, 
they basically Rock conclude it like, <laughs> I'm going to kill a big dragon thing called a salamander. Yeah, I'm going to kill a big one. No, I'm going to kill a big And so then the Outlander's like, okay, you and me, Vulcan, we'll go out and we'll kill a, we'll kill a salamander. Whoever kills the biggest one wins. So they go up this, uh, I think it's Mount Deathfire again. It's always Mount Deathfire. Um, it's like that that mountain in uh, Ocarina of Time. It's just like, yeah, it's just that one. Um, so they go and they they hunt, and Vulcan finds a pretty big one, but then he has a bit of a tumble fighting the salamander, and he's clinging onto the edge of the ledge, and then the outlander's like, oh, he's got this gigantic one. He's like, you having a bit of trouble there, mate? Oh, and he saves his life. And they go back to the, uh, the people of Nocturne, and he's like, oh, I know that, you know, the Emperor, or the Outlander in this case, oh, he, he sacrificed his massive salamander to make a bridge for our escape, and I've got the winning one because I brought it back, but he saved my life, so technically he won. And then Vulcan became a Primarch of the Imperium. That's pretty cool. So he's now in charge of the, the Dragon Warriors, and he goes, oh, Dragon Warriors, that's a bit on the nose. We're going to call them Salamanders. But With right. a donation by uh, Leon Leon, he says, aren't Alpha Legion and the Eldar do the same shit? Every time they lose or do something stupid, it is because something nonsense. <laughs> it's something, because something nonsense. It is all yeah. in their master plan. The difference is the Eldar can see the future, so they at least know what they're doing. The Alpha Legion are just <laughs> me, me, mystery. You're going to hate this, Colin, but aren't the Eldar basically Zinch? Yeah, but Jeez, they're cooler. They, they were here first. Um, <laughs> well, Zinch, Zinch is yeah, goofing well, himself. What do you mean, time. yes? Well, in the warp, he has always been. Yeah, well, that's stupid. <sighs> <laughs> um, is it wrong? <laughs> I, Thank you, Leon. You know, Thank you, Leon. The, the warp has always oh, been here. Yeah. It has always been a thing. Then the Eldar gods mm -hmm. are still around. That's just how it is then. Mm -hmm. If that's and, how we're going to pull in it. Spirit. <laughs> and, uh, the Eldar are not Zeech. Oh, goodness. Um, so, yeah. And with Vulcan back, Dragon was like, wow, this guy's tall. Like, for, for, like he's he's the biggest Primarch. He's like, how, how tall are Primarchs supposed shit. to be? Like, nine feet tall or something he's like 12 or whatever it is like oh he's imposing and he's, he's even amazing. taller than magnus projecting his height taller yeah yeah <laughs> he is tall um the only only guy taller is the emperor and it's we got a because there's always like a i've seen that image of like scale and it's like rogel dawn and then it's just vulcan's just that little bit taller you know, i don't think that's 100 percent accurate that image i know it's what you're talking about yeah. i don't even know if it's like law accurate but vulcan is usually like a head taller at least mm. than a lot of the other um, primarchs but either way he gets back to uh he's he's in he's inducted into the imperium he's given the 18th legion he does a few changes you know he goes we're gonna we're gonna remodel the companies to befit the different civilizations from nocturne we're gonna say oh imperial truth that's a bit cringe promethean cult that's cool. So they and they're like, they're, I was thinking about this the other day. They're like one of the few Legion era, well, one of the Great Crusade era legions that actually has chaplains. Because when you think about it, like most of them don't. Word bearers, obviously, they do. But one of the reasons salamanders do is because they have the the Promethean cult. So it's like, oh, it makes sense. They have like a religious thing. Whereas Ultramarines are like uh, theoretical. Chaplains are cool, practical. Religion is cringe. No chaplains. They don't really okay, get okay. them until just before the Horus Heresy. Like the, well, the, then, after the like... Edict of Nikea when Magnus got banned yeah, from exactly. using magic. Whereas, they, they basically okay. they put chapters in the Legion, so they were like, we're just here to make sure you guys are not cringe. Yeah, yeah. But they were a bit less like, oh, Crozius. Oh, that's a bit, a bit Lorgar, like copy paste i don't know was, uh, um and that's obviously more widespread after the horus heresy um but yeah and and with uh, vulcan back the le uh, the legion's really into crafting but like oh our dad he can make a mean sword that's cool and so they really love like, macaroni necklace and making things <laughs> necklace what <laughs> macaroni necklaces <laughs> oh macaroni ne <laughs> yeah, my, made this, my like, dad's well weapons done. are spicy <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's the thing. Vulcan is characteristically like the most compassionate Primarch. But at the same time, he's capable of making like world ending weapons. Like, absolutely. He goes into like, I think it's like a fugue state sometimes where he wakes up and he's like, oh, what have I made now? And then he's like, oh no, I made a gun that blows oh, up the no. galaxy. Oh, maybe, not again. Maybe that's very, what the. Very Oppenheimer of him. Maybe that's what they were made for, though. Maybe mm. that was their thing that they'd make. 
super destructive weapons, but they'd have the uh, the heart to well, only use them when necessary type of well, thing. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? That's why um, I believe it's the, um, I can't remember what it's called, but there's like an artifact that Vulcan made and he actually takes it to the throne room and he's like, put that with the Emperor. It's like a yeah. doomsday button. The fall of seven hammers. Something, the sling yeah. of seven hammers. Yeah, the, the, pen, the something of seven hammers. And it's like... Talisman. Talisman, yeah. yeah, yeah like, yeah. And the Emperor's like, I can only trust Vulcan to make these powerful weapons because I know he's the only one who'll hesitate to use them. Like, the lion would be like... <laughs> oh, yeah, <that's laughs> <fire away. laughs> yeah, yeah. Whereas, like, Vulcan's like... I mean, I've ki killing Eldar children's... I, I, I didn't want to. It's like, okay, Vulcan, okay. Um, I assure you, Judge, I did not want to force that. It just seemed good at the time. Uh, um, I, I like she was that. probably like, she was probably like 100 years old anyways. So, I mean, like, Does that on. change anything? <laughs> I like Jeez. to admit, listen, the lion has a point, though. It's it, it, If no one catches you, it's not a war crime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If there mm -hmm. are no witnesses, was it a murder? Anyway. Um, so, yeah. If and, a tree and, in and a forest, such, blah, blah, blah. And as Doesn't such... <laughs> there's not really much else to say about like the the other thing about the salamanders is like with all of these in particular there's not much law other than Istvan as far as before the 41st millennium um all you need to know is salamanders are compassionate they're master craftsmen and they're really like they're quite they i think they have an affinity more than anything to be like well not not iron warriors fortify not cringe fortify but like we'll set up a position we'll fire do you have a flamethrower you're my best friend that's kind of their <laughs> shtick um, oh, we've got another donation from Crimson Glory this time saying yes. four ninety nine. I wish to pet this creature. Vulcan was my favorite <laughs> in TTS. Love when his orc voice kicks in. Can good I old days. Listen? Thank you, brother. Good old uh, days. Geez. Good to see you. It's a good reference as well. Um, other than that, uh, we can talk about a few the characters from the Salamanders. So you got um, obviously Vulcan. You've got Artelus Numion, who was the first <laughs> captain of the Legion. Um, he he was there during McCrag when they found. Vulcan's crispy corpse descend from the heavens and go, oh no, <laughs> that's a dead Primark, that is. Pulled a, and they're just like prodding him, like, yeah, that's Sartade very dead. Primark. How did he get here? I don't know. Oh no. And Artelis was a bit depressed seeing his, his dad, like, proper crispy bacon, like, oh, <laughs> ugh. ugh. Like, and occasionally just be like, yeah, he's dead. He's dead. And he was, he's a bit doubtful. Um, but he had a, a weird sense of, oh, but but I, I can't really accept that he's dead. It doesn't make sense. Hmm. So they, they, they take his body back to Nocturne and they uh, are doing like the funeral procession thing as the planet's being assaulted as well. And they're like, okay, we're going to put him into Mount Deathfire because it's always Mount Deathfire. Um, we're going to put him in the lava and we're going to just like let him be one with Nocturne and we can lay him to rest. And uh Numion's like no I can't I can't he he he's very much a coke marine like uh like Colin with the elder he's like I'm not accepting this my dad's not dad can I dad. stop catching strays please <laughs> um, everyone it's like um, every time it's kind of a piece of shit kind of like yeah. Colin <laughs> well, the thing a is, massive asshole here's, 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 here's the thing though at least he's not as cringe as an Iron Hands fan like how anyway uh, um, all right yeah i can I live with redirecting all. the shots <laughs> i mean i'm about to i'm about to get more law than you here so you know yeah, yeah. Oh, done. um so yeah but he's like my dad i love him so much he hurls himself into mount death fire because he reckons it'll do something he dies and then his sacrifice resurrects vulcans somehow not exactly sure how probably something to do with the promethium cult well, I, I don't know but, if, I thought it was kind of like how, you know, the Emperor, if he gets Psyker's sacrifice to him, he can mm. get rejuvenated. It's probably a similar <laughs> But Vulcan thing. does that with lava. Like, cool. Well, it's, I think it's implied <laughs> that the Emperor basically whispered to Nubian being like, yo, see the lava? Yeah? Hmm. You know, Dip like, your dad you know, in it. <laughs> no, like, no, he said, like, also, jump in it. What? <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? It's just a... Back, you know, background thought. Just do it. The emperor is like, what is that? The call of the void, where it's like you're driving and you're like, I could just drive off the road right now. Hmm. Well, like, you know, you lose concentration uh, yeah, for like one second, thing. like a split second. You're like, oh. <laughs> um, we got got another five dollar donation from Donkey Man USA. Oh, thank you, brother. Um, thank you. Saying Noble Six is still in that cave. I also follow Path <laughs> Wow. Uh, 
Yeah, sheesh. Dude, he's, Vulcan is just Noble Six. They both fell out of orbit. They both are <laughs> hiding in a cave alive somewhere, for real. Yeah, to be fair, yeah. he, he drops like Massacre happened, and then all Vulcan saw was survive. Like, yeah, makes sense. That... Um, see, it checks. Um, so yeah, that's that's Artelis. Not really much other than he was a cool, he has cool armor. He's first captain for a bit, and he 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 died so our savior could live. Vulcan, nice. Um, only two other, uh, two or so others. I've got Nomus Raitan, regent of Nocturne and Lord Chaplain of the Prometheum cult during this time. Uh, he defended Nocturne from invasion during the Horus Heresy. Hmm. That's him. Uh, and last of all, you got Forge Father to Kel. Um, so. You meant you know how I mentioned like salamanders, good craftsmen, and Vulcan has a tendency to make horrifically powerful weapons by accident. Um, before he left for Istvan Five, he went to Tekel and he was like the, the equivalent of like a tech marine for the salamanders, but artisanal. And he's like, "I'm going off, I'm going off to like a big fight. We've never done this kind of fight before. Um, could you do me a favor?" Check out my massive vault of doomsday weapons. And there's like thousands of things he's made. And it's like, oh, these are cool. And he says, All right, to Kel, break like here's the cauldron. I think it's the chalice of fire or cauldron or whatever. It's like, I need you to dunk everything to this cauldron, destroy everything, but pick but like destroy and he's like, everything. We can't let anything fall into straight hands. And then yeah, he goes, wipe my hard drive. Wipe my hard drive. But they can't be found. Dad, these are really cool. I don't. I, we shouldn't break these. Like this. This is a, This is a, You know. This is like a prestige level five um, cod knife. Five, five million pounds. CS:GO. Like, whatever. Okay. CS:GO <laughs> knife. Like, we can't. We can't. Burn this, this. this is no. the ten grand CS:GO knife. Yeah. Exactly. It was. Uh, like Leon. That. Leon gave us another uh, five Thank you, pounds. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Says we all love Colin and his bad opinions. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Every stray. Bro, please. Oh. They were. I actually. I read an Instagram alone. comment the other day that said, "If there's one pancreas no fan or pancreas no work fan on the planet, it's me." If there's one <laughs> pancreas no work hater on the planet, it's also me. <laughs> it's better to be like feared how... and loved. <laughs> I do like how angry Homunculus basically encapsulated to Kel's storyline of cast it into the fire. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> he goes, Dad, Dad, please, can I keep like a few cool things? And he's like, all right, nine. You get nine cool things. And the cauldron's one of them. You get eight, other than this, you get eight things, you pick eight things, and now you're a forge father. And that means you've got to, like, stop these from falling into bad people's hands, because whatever you pick, it'll be a real big pain in the ass if anyone gets their hands on it. And so he became the first forge, ma forge father, and that's his character arc completed. He broke everything else, um, he recycled everything like a good boy, and he kept nine items, including a ship and a massive doomsday cannon on that ship and some weapons. So that's all Is he Is there, has. like, who's um, the one who, he was the original, like, Legion Master, and then he got orked, and then he, uh, and then uh, Vulcan <laughs> made him, like, a, a, a yeah, bespoke orked. dreadnought. Cassian, Cassian Vaughn? Yeah, he was like, his one? Yeah, he, he was made, Vulcan made him, like, a dreadnought chassis that was practically indestructible. Um, and he, he fought the Alpha yeah. Legion during the Horus Heresy. He's kind of cool. He fought. He fought alongside. Um, he was at Ispan, wasn't he? Got warrior, buried. <laughs> called Narik Draga, and they were like, "Oh, these Alpha Legion are pretty cringe." And then the like Erud was like, "I know, right?" And I'm an Iron Warrior. It's like, yeah. And they <laughs> fought together to fight the Alpha Legion. I think it was a uh, Headhunter. I think I've read this. I might have read that book. Um, yeah, and the last thing I'll say about salamanders, um, there's not much else to say about the salamanders. Um, they were in the second Hell, yeah. Third war. Hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, it sounds about right. That's about it. All Enjoy. Right. Uh, so, before, why isn't I have not kept up with the salamanders lore? Why nowadays <laughs> no is Vulcan Hestan not the chapter master anymore? No, he's Tushan is the chapter yeah, master. But why why he's isn't like young. Vulcan Hestan anymore? Did he die? Well, he he's never like, was. Chapter he never was. Oh, he's really? Because he, he he's was just the, the main father. character. Okay. He has to look for the nine artifacts okay. of Vulcan, and he's got five. Oh, so, I see. He has so like a special role. 
yeah his, his role okay. is well that makes sense Master. that makes so sense he's like he literally goes like you 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 come with me and then they, mm -hmm. just, they just go looking for for the weapons like also cool. vulcan has stan as like a title they inherit yeah so mm. they all basically become vulcan has like you basically lose your old name and you become the vulcan has stan <laughs> you are now vulcan yeah basically <laughs> I mean, it's really cool to be called like it'll be I'm like a, Vulcan, and so is my dad. You know, it would be like mean. someone inherit like someone in the Ultramarines going, and now you're like your your mini Gilliman. Be like, oh, yeah. damn, <laughs> you know what I mean? I got a lot of responsibility. Mm. I think that's uh, I <laughs> you're Rabute Gilliman. I'm Rabute Gilliboy. <laughs> oh <laughs> um, God. Uh, speaking of the baby. perhaps not the best Legion, but the best shattered Legion, oh, yeah. <laughs> the law, okay. um, Iron Hand Baby. They have, this is all their lore. It's here. There's no, there's <laughs> Let's no go. Post oh, man. Um, Iron Hands start. I'm going to go like, with Andy. This will be not like super brief, but I'm not going to do everything. Uh, basically, the Iron Hands kind of start as a legion called the Stormwalkers uh, on Terra. They kind of get that name from a tactic, which is basically Hammer and Anvil. It's just called Hammer and Storm. I really hate that part because <laughs> it's just. <laughs> God, uh, that's awful. <laughs> um, we do have a donation here, though, just before I go on. Thank you it's, very uh, much. Rolf, there thank you, go. brother. It says, I enjoy the uh, Edgar A. Oh, Edgar Allan Poe Marines of oh, Raven Guard. brother. As I like the idea of dudes wearing an Abrams <laughs> worth of metal being <laughs> sneaky <laughs> and Astartes being more tactical in general. What changes or additions would you gents make to garner them more love? Um, Books. <laughs> yes. Give them lore. Write yeah. books, please. Yeah. Uh, a, slightly <laughs> well, a slightly serious answer is they need a better floor. They're kind of like They're each sad, legion's right? got a cool, like the cool legions have got like a floor, or there's like a there's like a big thing. Like the dark angels are embarrassed of the fallen. The blood angels have black rage. The yeah, raven guard don't really have perfect. enough of a floor. <laughs> and not like when they go in the light, it burns. They go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's too. That's too blood just angry. two obvious references is probably the problem with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But speaking of a legion that will become very flawed, which I enjoy. <laughs> um, so they base most of the legion gets their recruits from Old Albia, which is basically UK baby. Wow. Yeah, true life of a Brexit <laughs> geezer. Oh, no. <laughs> no, we've got so Best long without it. England. Dinner with, with? dinner with the Emperor, lovely. Um, lovely. <laughs> yeah, you're right, mate. Oh, I'm from Old Albia. And, um, <laughs> More time. What are you playing at? I'm not doing that. You gazer. All gazers from Albia go stormwalk it. That's what I start that. What, what is that? <laughs> oh, well. um, the stormwalkers, they're pretty cool, but again, not much really that kind of makes them unique as most legions are on like the early Unification Wars stuff. Uh, side note: The gene seed is good, though. The seed is good, brothers. <laughs> good, good for what one you, specific what do you mean thing. By that? <laughs> what, what did what he do mean, you mean by this? By <laughs> the gene seed is good for Don't one specific thing. Me. Bionics, baby, chrome me up. Do okay. Bionicle law. <laughs> Bionicle law. Yes, please. Episode. Yes, please. But um, <laughs> essentially, uh, Iron Hands gene seed is pretty. Like they have a high take of to bionics. So if legionaries lose their limbs or an eye, you know. They don't have rejection that much, so that's pretty cool. Uh, their Primarch is perhaps who has the least amount of lore is Ferris Manus. Yeah. Sadly, as we heard from earlier from the Isfan part of the beginning, uh, he kind of got killed before he could have a character arc. So <laughs> he he's starting it, and then it you know then it kind of ended. But you know a Primarch did have to die on perhaps the mm. the most you know horrific battle in the entire early heresy someone had to go it might as well have been him yeah, yeah might as well um he was found on the world of medusa again another greco-roman reference there we love the uniqueness mm -hmm. and medusa's basically like i mean it is just the biggest shithole perhaps <laughs> that has Jeez. ever existed it's like kind of a forge world but then they don't make anything cool for a while oh. medusa Medusa, even to the modern timeline, is like is the, there's like they even describe it as like people who grow up in Medusa don't really see things that have color in them because there's nothing <laughs> on the planet that produces color, so oh, it's, like, it's all grayscale. <laughs> oh it's my god! It's basically rocks. People kind of rave about in like they have some technology, but they kind of rave about in 
like as just roaming it's basically mad you know what it is it's like grayscale mad max it describes it as <laughs> at the time and ferris manis his story is he lands on medusa ends up fighting potentially i think a tomb spider called which he names like a Sirenoth, which is because it has like a mythology around it because it's basically a necron i don't think it's exactly a tomb spider but it's one of the necron things that is basically been hawking around for ages then the emperor comes and it starts to transform they get incorporated into the imperium the weird thing about the Iron Hands slash, again, it, well, first of all, the weird thing is it's, it's a man named Ferris Manus who is Iron Hands, uh, you know, Primarch of the Iron Hands who often gets legionaries replacing their Iron Hand. So I've got a pertinent question about the law of the Iron Hands, Hal. Oh, yes. Go for it. Who has a, a, a sturdier grip, Ferris Manus or Rogel Dawn? Oh, what are we gripping on? <laughs> because one's a clenched fist and hey, one's yo. a metal hand. Hey, yeah, I mean, technically, Ferris Manus then, because it just locks. You know what I mean? It's metal. Whereas Rogel Dawn's grip is more of like a... He has like a grip over things in a sort of ruler sense. Um, that almost threw me off complete there. But the Medusa is quite... <laughs> yeah, what do you mean by that? <laughs> but Medusa's quite interesting because... They had this, like, all, basically, you know, sort of a barbarian clan system. And they basically transposed that into the Legion itself. And each of the clans within uh, the Iron Hand, they all specialize in different traits, although somewhat around the idea of it being technology related. Some of the clans that are no... They, they had clans at the time, but some of them are no longer in the 40th millennium. They've sort of changed or new ones have arisen. But at the time of the... Great Crusaders, ones called Atraxi, Borgar, Felg, uh, Cardoran, Morgal, and Ungvar. It's called, it's called Borgar? Uh, Did yeah, I catch B -O -R 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 -G -A -R, B-O-R-R-G-A-R, Borgar. Wonderful. Okay. Did you move Borgar? Wonderful. Borgar. And, um, I love Warhammer. The, cl the clans themselves are sort of, as much as it, they were designed to basically cover each other's weaknesses or sort of be legions within legions so they would send out clans to sort of you know what i mean like if the iron hands had to get um codex astarte at any point they probably could have so mm. they were they were obviously they had so much like magicians are quite independent and hard-headed much like ferris manis uh some <laughs> notable legionaries uh we're gonna go for that before their great crusade law oh, can i uh, mention a tidbit about the clan oh yeah good well? So basically, Ferris had a policy of, of we're not going to make Medusa peaceful. You are all going to fight each other all the time to make you strong. So that's the kind of guy he was. He's like, I could like m make peace and unity between. It's like, no, I want you guys to be like attacking each other and like prodding each other with sticks and punching each other <laughs> in the teeth. Like, yeah, that's the kind of guy I was like, just to keep you tough. So, so yeah, he's an asshole. Opposite of Vulcan. <laughs> oh, also, they got on quite well. <laughs> one last thing to mention as well is that it describes in the books that every single person from Medusa is pretty ugly. Like they're just, they're just like <laughs> they're they're just not... like me. Oh, it... No, like they are like it. It reinforces a lot. Like they are all pretty. Like the None looks of them is are not allowed a... to have a, a non-broken nose by the age of ten. It's like no, we're. <laughs> They're pretty. Ugh, okay. They're pretty. Ruth, they are pretty. It's pretty ruthless to live on Medusa. But then you know, again, like the strong emerge. They're mm -hmm. fighting a war. They're not building civilizations. Um, but some notable members again: Ferris Manus. His. We're going to go over most of his story in the subsequent uh, oh, Great Crusade section. Leon Leon oh. donated a ten ten pound, saying Ferris Manus, aka Iron Daddy. Iron. That's him, baby. Thank not you. Not for very long, unfortunately, in the law. Sad. <laughs> Uh, Ferris Manus, again, Primarch of the Tenth. He kind of, I mean, as much as like I will go over his character again, he's just sort of a very strong-headed, but um, I wouldn't say like he's not like a, known as he doesn't fulfill a role that a lot of the other brothers do in like a finished empire. Ferris Manus was designed to build an empire and for conquest. He never thought of himself as something more than that. Really, you know, he was he could build stuff like many. You know, he was pretty good with technology he could understand it he could always he, like perturabo could build things without having to like he had the no, designs like, he, he like he mapped in his brain knew, knew everything basically yeah whereas ferris manners could just work out anything so like one of there's a bit in one 
book where he's actually looking at technology that's way beyond the Imperium. Then he just by a look, he can actually dissect it and he actually understands it. And he also has like some cool weaponry. He's that like teenager who used to, de- uh, to disassemble PCs and be like, how does this work? But like, stern. Have you heard of Bitcoin? <laughs> it's getting big. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, another small, I'm going to go through quite, there's quite a few Iron Hand characters because they kind of, this is like where they get all their lore really. There's a guy named Amadeus Duquesne who was kind of like one of the OGs of the Legion. He, he was the Lord Commander. Yeah, when so when a lot of them would talk about uh, Amadeus Duquesne, they would mention like, yo, that's Amadeus Duquesne. Like, holy <laughs> crap. Because this guy was basically sort of like pretty much the oldest guy in the entire Legion. Very well respected. You know, Primarchs knew his name. Uh, sadly, he gets it. Uh, is fun and he's the one who actually like sends out the yeah. blaring call for like he literally just says them like you know run away live get revenge and he lets himself sort of buy time for others to evacuate in uh, evacuate in space uh there's a character called gabriel santar i think he's part of the is he part of the sisyphean the crew of the uh, look santor santor dies i think on um Istvan, because he's the first captain. Yeah, I'm sorry, no, Gabriel, I'm thinking of, sorry, there's so many of them, I get confused. Gabriel Santa was the <laughs> first captain, apologies. He has to submit another name. Gabriel Santa was the first captain of the Iron Hand. Again, as you can tell, memorable. Gabriel Santa unfortunately dies in the third book, so in the mm. horror series. So they, oh, by the way, uh, fourth we, book, got a, we got a 30 squigglies from incoming backup saying they Thank don't you, tell you that in law, but the reason Ferris needed to get metal hands is because he got his hands bitten off by Boing Gob. Yes. Yes. In brackets, Rip Rotisseried King. (laughs) (laughs) I like that end. It's all coming together. It's all coming together. (laughs) Not surprised. There's a cool bit on Medusa where they basically say there's just like um, like, a Shadowlands area. And there's just like creatures in there where like even the modern day Iron Hands just don't go near it. Because it's just considered like, that's (laughs) fucked that area. (laughs) (laughs) Hopefully. Uh, Gabriel Santar was kind of the only space marine who was able to like calm Ferris Manners because Ferris Manners was a bit like once someone pissed him off, he was like a bull, and he would you know he'd lock on and he was like I'm just I'm re- I'm tearing it down. He's, like, he's a bit <laughs> Richard Nixon with it. Uh, <laughs> no one's breaking in. <laughs> storm Dick, sit down. Richard Nixon. <laughs> so um, a little bit future Wait, is, 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 um, is Kennedy Nixon's full back. Grand, example? What's going on? <laughs> His, that thing in Futurama as well, with like his head's in the jar as well. It's pretty, <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty good link. Uh, Gabriel Santa was pretty skilled, but he did not end up dying on on the fields of Istvan Five. He kind of, I can't remember who killed him. It was not. It was one of the other Empress children. I don't know if you remember it Eli. Might have been Voirosian, possibly the guy who's in who was the guy who birthed the um, who are the sonic weapons. Uh, because uh, uh, yeah, Marius is the yeah. first noise marine. Yeah, yeah. I think right. he, the first noise marine, basically killed him, and Ugh. they were previously friends, so that yeah. was awkward. Is this on Istvan that you're talking about? Yeah, they yeah. I think he like there. cuts him up the groin and then like wears the skin yeah. or does something. Yeah. And the thing yeah. is, is worth horrific. mentioning that again. This is like the the first time anyone's seen what the Emperor's children have been doing with like themselves, their, their makeup. Yeah, and when I say makeup, so... I mean like scalpels and stuff. And the Iron Hands, basically their reaction is just like, let's go fight them. And they just go, ugh. Like, that's I, I don't want to fight that anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty horrible there. So well, I will slight one bit I want to add on as well. The Iron Hands themselves are not, even at this point, they're not like super, like, not like, pro, like a pro, like a lot of the ones are like Empress George are very pro-Emperor during Great Crusade or something like that. The Iron Hands were very much just like, yeah, we're kind of just soldiers and we enjoy soldiering. Like, they don't even have that much Imperial mm-hmm. iconography on all their armor. Their armor is designed yeah. to just be the, the best in the, I mean, all of them. Just like people. They're, they're Pretty just much. They're utilitarian, uh, utilitarian. Like, they just get the job done. And, and that's like, Ferris never wanted to be like a conqueror or a win. He wanted to be a conqueror. He didn't want to be a leader. He's like, I'll just get stuff done because that's the job. I'll get yeah. the job done and I'll do it well. And I'll go home and I'll do it all again. Mm. <laughs> I'll <laughs> do my wife, duty. Susan. Isn't she lovely? And um, <laughs> the next character is called Shadrach Medusin. Some people who, hey, who actually have hey, even heard of the Iron best Hands. Iron Hand character. Are like he. Shadrach. Because the reason why everyone likes Shadrach Medusin, I will go over some more of his events in his, uh, the Horus Heresy lore section, but Shadrach was a Terran. 
and he's basically kind of one of the few who actually sort of realized the flaws within the allegiance ideology and was able to do something really cool within the Horus heresy and actually almost managed to kill um Hor Horus himself <laughs> he, managed, he, he tried to assassinate Horus loads of times and he got really <laughs> close <laughs> and it's really yeah, fun Horus is just like this guy's getting on my nerves and he's just like <laughs> yeah he was a Several massive times. pain in the ass for uh, Horus another All character called... can do attitude yeah <laughs> Another character called Ortec Moore, who's perhaps the biggest asshole of all the loyalists <laughs> ever. This guy would like he would. It's kind of that thing of um, everyone here watched Bleach. Is it? I never anyone, saw. Oh, it. There's a I character called like, Yarwatch. Maybe Yarwatch. Who, like if if someone had to, like in the Iron Hands, you can become a captain by dueling the previous captain and killing them. Like yeah. they would only let the strongest right, lead, so, and Ortec so Moore legit. would would regularly duel other legionaries for fun just because they annoyed him oh not even iron <laughs> hands or no other or other ha iron hands you'd like he had a reputation he was good at what he did but he was a complete dickhead he was very Dick. he didn't, this guy did not care about civilians one day <laughs> um there's also another captain called um Ulrak brathan who will be part of the yeah the crew Probably of the sissy femme which like is that, yeah. The what? The, the crew, seriously? The Sisyphean. The actual Sisyphean. 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 <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> the Sisyphean. <laughs> apologies. It's a different vessel. It's oh a, my god. Yes, the US, the uh, the the Imperial there's a, there's sailing ship femboy. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's a Horus Heresy plot, yeah. which is it follows the crew of a basically the Shattered Legions. Um, like a few of them survive, and they all board this ship, and this is the one that manages to basically semi-assassinate Fulgrim and then some other oh, stuff that yeah. Andy will cover. But um, but they, they even have a whole, uh, Seed of Terror book on them as well. So they but this is like the captain who basically gets Isvand and he's sort of in like a... He's, he's kept in ice in stasis. And they basically have to awaken him like kind of like a um, like a computer for like information. And he's always at the edge of death. It's like an interesting oh. weird lore bit there. But again, because like, the Iron Hands just don't care if like... You know, someone's like, turn off the life support. I'm, I'm, I'm over. And they're like, not, no, <laughs> no, you ain't. You say you do. And uh, oh, I'm just going away for a bit. Have fun, Andy. We have another character oh, called, um, almost some of the characters though. Again, not that, not a huge amount of them, but just someone called Jebez Org, who was kind of the initial leader after all the shattered legions were just kind of lost after what happened. And Jebez Org was a Medusan, and he kind of realized like he wasn't right for the leadership and he would eventually give it over to Shadrach Medusin who is like yo let's just let's get guerrilla warfare going <laughs> and um <laughs> he would be his he actually which is very weird in Medusin like culture you don't really give up a position like that so he was quite different another character is called Bion Henricos who sort of yeah I think he's the one who is they basically discover that there's something called the dark mechanicum and they discover that like, the warp is basically infect. They discover how like, their plot line. They discover how the traitor legions are able to navigate through the warp, like, even to the modern day. They basically have like corrupted machine spirits that are like with demons in them. So they, mm -hmm. there's like, a plot line there. And they also uh, he follows along with some some white scars, and they basically try and kill Horus again. <laughs> funny enough, and they it's one of the characters, theme. yeah. <laughs> That involves a plot of like there's a character called Little Horus who doesn't make it to the end the of the Horus Axeman, right? Yeah, yeah. He they try and kill him as well. He Bion Henricross ends up getting killed by Little Horus, but then um Hubu Khan, who's one of the white scars, he got lent oh, there's a really cool part of the law here. At this time, the like the duelists of the Iron Hands, they carried around Zwei Handers. Hmm. which right, is like and it's, a, it's a thing that they don't have in the 40k stuff but I they wish they did no but it's because again like the iron hands they built bulk armor so they thought we need like a heavier weapon mm -hmm. and he actually lends it to a, a white scar and the white scar goes this is really hard to wield and they're like yeah you got it takes a while to get used to that and he ends up like slicing horus axi man's face off That's literally, like, literally has a oh, face off yeah block. yeah yeah Fa took his face Literally face off. off. And yeah. <laughs> and then there's a last character called Cybek, uh, Cybek Wayland, who's probably one of the coolest names I actually enjoy in that Legion. Cybek Wayland uh, was a character who basically is again part of the, the Sissy Femme. Sissy Femme. <laughs> <laughs> Sissy Femme group. Um, 
he's sort of tied in with a character that Andy will talk about later, but he's also he's also immortalized in the Iron Hands like um Medusan sort of fortress monastery as like the one of the few images they have of the Horus Heresy, which is Cybek Wayland rescuing Raven Guard from Isvan Fi. So he's actually like an yeah. immortalized character. It's a, it's a shame. He's one of the coolest characters and there's like one picture of him and it's like you know there's that Horus Heresy Siege of Terror books images where it's like busts of just the characters' heads. That's the mm. only thing we have. It's like can we not just have him in like, the armor, please? It's, he, his, it's really his story is cool. quite funny because he doesn't like any of the um, salamanders or Raven Guard <laughs> because he doesn't like like the they all have like a sense of humor and then he's like, mm. <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> odd. He's just the typical grumpy old man, like, oh, I don't do kids. And uh, there oh. you all have fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moving on to the Great Crusade law. Essentially, well, Iron Hand's law starts with again uh, terror spreading out, then spreading out and meeting their Primarch. Um, Ferris Manuscus gets found really early on. It's like the fourth Primarch found pretty. So he gets to mold his legion pretty quickly. Iron Hands specialize in, you know, basically upgrading their technology, bionics, heavy, heavy artillery and <laughs> bombardment. They often have the, mo even to the modern day, they have the most amount of um, transport tanks out of any legion. They're basically an armored core of. It's the, the, of all the core. legions, um, armor core. Someone said armor core. It has law. Right? <laughs> That's why. What's that? Um, what's that shop where you buy all the gadgets in the UK? It's like man, or whatever it's called. Greg's. <laughs> no, Greg's. <laughs> There's like that gadget shop, and it's just like the Iron Hands are just like those guys. It's just like, oh, they've got drones. Oh, they've got like what weather spoons? Yeah. <laughs> well, mm. People don't know the weather spoons, Loris. That's the face wall. I, I do not know yeah. the weather spoons, <laughs> Loris. Oh, weather I weather spoons in the UK. By the way, there's like a weather spoons like a chain. Um, usually, like you people like chain restaurants or like chain fast food. This is a chain pub, but it's known Imagine... for having like pretty good drinks uh, and then pretty much like Colin. basically what people think English food is. Think of it like this: Imagine <laughs> like that's the, food. the it's the McDonald's of alcoholism. It's like what if oh. McDonald's <laughs> were a pub? Oh, that so sounds so gross, dude! Oh in, my god! Really cheap alcohol. There might be fights, but they've got security on the door, so it's fine. It's like that's the vibe. Like if people complain <laughs> about English, like <laughs> if people complain about English food, the this is the place that makes that fun. food. It is uh -huh. where perhaps cuisine goes to get <laughs> died to get picked apart at Isfahan Five. <laughs> <laughs> microwaved, microwave cooked chicken basket oh. for me, please, and a strong. Oh. You never, oh. never eat at a oh. weather spoon. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this deep fried arsehole. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> My but, favorite. Um, so, so continue on with the law, and then the Iron Hands Please. also develop their friendship <laughs> at the time with the Emperor's children and Fulgrim. You know, they basically become best buds because the Iron Hands are their whole thing about uh, they, well, much like the Salamanders, have like a self-sacrifice thing. The Iron Hands seek um, perfection, although their perfection is more of in terms of winning war. Like they basically, like whatever makes them the perfect like soldiers. Game they will do that. So if they have to upgrade, like, and they say they think a lot of time that like, the, the phrase, the flesh is weak sort of starts around this time. Although I will explain the kind of how they misinterpret it, but they, a lot of them think, ah, my poor human eye, I get old, I get sick. I can, you know, my human eye, I have human flaws, but a machine doesn't have flaws like that. So they start to replace stuff. Uh, they basically conquer loads of planets. Again, it's not, the most decorated out of all of the legions, but they pretty much are. Yeah, like, not, not I probably say middle of the pack, to be honest, because the Iron Hands, yeah. despite the, the tactical, average. despite the tactical genius of like the Lion or Horus and stuff like that, the Iron Hands are very much. They are sent against like the kind of similar to the Iron Warriors. They do get sent against pretty horrific foes a lot of the time because again. They'll they'll grind things down into paste. Although they they aren't like the Iron Warriors. It's like we have one tactic, and if we throw enough of our men at the wall, it yeah. will. We the will Iron Hands win. Are like, <laughs> we should maybe go around the wall. Good yeah. idea. Like they're a bit more logical. A slight no, interesting as well is, is that. Is. <laughs> a slight interesting as well is not as well known, which is the Iron Hands actually have quite a lot of. Um, so you know, like in sports teams, like, like players get sent out on loan. There's quite mm -hmm. a lot of that that happens in the Iron Hands. So they actually have quite a few like smaller detachments or squads from other legions. So actually, mm -hmm. a, a contingent of Thousand Sons actually follow along with them. A small amount of Emperor's Children, a small amount of Ultramarines actually follow along 
in some stories as well. So they, they actually work with, and they've often, to their as well, trained a lot of the other Primarchs or Legions. So they kind of are like a weird mix. Again, like because there's so many different clans within... It's sort of like its own mini empire than the Iron Hands. Yeah, and they sort and of. And again, it goes back to that we were we were taught to to be get better through yeah. conflict and competition. So they like to be like, "How do you do war?" Yeah, with like special hats. Cool, we can try that. Um, yeah. What's yeah. the weird part is everyone seems to like them in universe in terms oh, yeah. of like all like... the other Primarchs and Legions like yeah. working with them because it's kind of that they're seen as like um all the food. Yeah, but obviously yeah. they say like the food of the old reliable essentially. There's nothing yeah. wrong with them. They're not going to be your best mate, but they're also like that's that co-worker yeah. who's going to get done. You know, like, yeah. that co-worker who actually does his job. Nail and you need a hammer. Yeah. It's a pretty mm -hmm. good hammer. I'm just saying. Yeah, uh, but you're not friends like, outside of work. <laughs> so, and I like how like on on both sides of the aisle, it's like Horus said, if we get the Iron Hands on the traitor fold, we'll win the war. And then Gilliman was like, of all the Dauntless few, they're one of them. Where I'm like, uh, and when he when when Ferris died. Several man tears from Gilliman going, oh, I like Ferris. Oh, <laughs> oh no. just from a comment from a Jared uh, Ezrin who put English food is barely passable as food. <laughs> Listen here. Listen here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't disagree. I have, I have French palate as well. So, do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? It's a culture of overworking. So, therefore, food is not, you don't like, you don't care because lunch is t like 30 minutes hmm. at most. I don't know. I get a lot of that's what we get around here. <laughs> I know, but it's just, I guess, overwork. There's too much overworking in our culture and not enough spice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, the, where was I on the law? Oh, yeah. So at this time, they're kind of, again, the Iron Hands are very much, they don't really care about being like number one because they kind of know like Horus is the most favored son. Ferris mm -hmm. knows that. Ferris kind of likes the Emperor because the Emperor is sort of like, he's like his big brother. In a way, who like where they had like the wrestling match in the living room, and the big brother won, so it's kind of like I respect you now, kind of thing. That because when 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 the emperor landed on Medusa, he basically went, "All right, the emperor, let's go fight <laughs> round one, ding ding." Round one went straight fight. in. The one of the first few things that happens in novel form is a small story where basically Ferris Manus gets ice gets isolated from his legion by the Eldar. And essentially, yeah. this Eldar uh, Farseer is trying to warn him, basically saying, like, listen, I need to speak to you. You're a Primarch, son of the Emperor. A catastrophic civil war will be coming soon. And Ferris Man is like, alien filth, what are you saying? Lies. And, just, <laughs> and, he's basically, and then the Eldar basically goes, he's too stubborn-headed. Why did they choose him? <laughs> and, right. yeah, they choose, they chose all the wrong Primarchs to talk to. Yeah. Eldred, yeah, could, yeah like... There is an interesting <laughs> part where... Was right there. <laughs> <laughs> they actually show it's an interesting bit where they manage to separate him by creating a psychic storm that basically short circuits um electronics. So an entire legion that has bionics, that was like their scenes they they would this sort of changed them because they're like, oh my god, they just tapped us in our biggest weakness. And one character I mentioned earlier called um Bion Henry Cos, he was quite young at the time, he basically only had an augmetic arm. Like one or and then he took it off and then when he took it off they're all like oh my god what, what are you, you doing do yeah. he's like what are you doing that's cringe but a lot but he basically went i don't care because our primarch's in danger and he alone with like basically the mortal soldiers went in to go fight yeah. the eldar the mortal soldiers basically got killed to a man but because they did a job they couldn't do they basically gave him like a place of honor so they kind of guarded the uh primarch since then come in the name of the group whatever because again iron hands law um <laughs> they would then uh, well, the, the morlocks is it i think so maybe I can't that's remember. the honor guard that's like the the elite oh no this is that's the part of the legion this is like the mortal human ones oh, um right. there's also another event where essentially ferris and manus they found a world that was kind of like they basically found a second mechanicum and ferris was like he already had a pretty strong alliance the iron, the iron hands have always had a strong alliance with the mechanicus mechanicum of mars mm -hmm. and they no. basically went Yo, we kind of needed to like just pack this world in and implode it. And Rogel Dawn went, nah, we could probably just incorporate them into the Mechanicum. They had a massive row about it and they basically fielded champions. Yeah, this is where Sig yeah, Sigismund basically managed to beat the Iron Hands champion. And Ferris has basically walked away being like, 
fuck we looked weak you know like we're pissed <laughs> yeah and, and he basically like took that guy aside and was just like why do you suck go, yeah guess who's getting beating tonight just saying like, <laughs> no, this is all don't actually like that was the kind of guy that ferris was it's like <laughs> if you fail I'm gonna make you pay for the it. whole thing was. Up. I'm gonna whoop your ass. <laughs> oh, a slight thing as well. The Iron Hands are not friends with their Primarch. Like as much as like a lot of them, are like they're like, you know, oh, friends, you're my sons. Ferris Manus is very much like I'm your, your I'm your commander. That's all mm. I am to you. Your soldiers first. Um, so there's a cool bit there. There's also a and yeah, the... they're extremely loyal and they love him, but they are like it's like stern dad, but stern yeah. dad is also he just like, wants them to be better. Uh, fighting and we're like, there's we also like fighting. uh the events called the war on gardenal which is basically they find a planet where essentially humans are sort of produced in i don't think they're not vat grown but essentially people just get to like basically the, the nobles essentially get their gene seed shall we say spread out amongst the population and the there are literal billions upon billions of humans on this planet and this like sort of small empire and the Iron Hands are having to fight them. They have like terrible, like basically modern day guns versus Iron Hands. But there's so many of them, like all the Iron Hands weapons keep getting clogged up with <laughs> meat and <laughs> horrific Jeez. things. And then this is where they find out like there's an assassination plot on Ferris Manus where there's kind of like the old members of the nobility are on like a life support. They basically have like what a dreadnought should be if it's like a futuristic sci fi. Hmm. And they manage to like sneak in to the main capital ship and ferris managed by his throne is inside a vault like he made an actual vault <laughs> inside the ship yeah yeah the which Ambalari doesn't like which actually gets cool. turned against him because one of the guys guards outside he basically has like a like a bomb trigger and he basically starts vomiting up acid and just locks the doors <laughs> in the vault and they try and then the two people a psyker and this sort of massive sci-fi dreadnought trying to assassinate ferris so the psyker like tortures his mind with like visions of his old life and him oh, basically tough. surviving as a baby <laughs> fighting yeah. a necron thing and then this massive dreadnought which has like plasma futuristic cannons which is like where the i said earlier like ferris like able to recognize technology that's beyond even imperial stuff mm -hmm. but ferris just just oh, there's, a, there's a one great bit basically he ends up winning and the dreadnought <laughs> guy basically gets smashed apart and then the psycho guy goes i'm so sorry in fact maybe we could work together and before you can finish that sentence <laughs> it literally says like ferris just literally caves his um <laughs> hammer into the guy and it goes so hard it like dents the wall of the actual oh. <laughs> um, nice. the vault that he yeah, yeah. like yeah, he, he, he said that he hits it so hard like, yeah i'm not locked in here with you you're locked in here with me bonk <laughs> he said he hits it so hard he actually caves in the inside of the in, almost impenetrable vault door that he made. <laughs> so it's pretty. Awesome. It, it's a great. Could you imagine there. being on the other side of it and you're just like, can you hear anything? And all you just hear is donk, donk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He rockets um, Fulgrim's hammer that he made. Uh, one of the last few bits of the Great Crusade is towards the end. They have like a small bit of lore where they mention they're kind of worried that they basically got overshadowed by most of the other legions because a lot of them, again, the, the emperor kind of has. Did. Yeah, the emperor had favorites and. They basically have to come to terms with the fact, like Ferris, sort of. At one point, he tries to sort of act like how Fulgrim or Gilliman would, where he starts to like negotiate with people and things like that, and it always ends up in failure. So he basically goes, "What the hell am I doing? The, uh, the Emperor's already got a Gilliman. I'm Ferris effing Manus." So he ends up, "I'm just the guy who do. I'm the guy who rocks up and destroys planets. I don't need to be more complicated." Honest, than I'm that. just loving the idea of him in a negotiation, like, "Hi there, I'm the diplomat from the so and so." He's like, "Hi there, um, I'm Hammer. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. Do you like hands?" <laughs> what? Ugh, and he just <laughs> he's just oh. like me yeah he <laughs> he basically sort of has a come to clarity moment where he just says i shouldn't you know other than the ones of you know vulcan's a crafter gilliman's a, a diplomat the lion's a leader horus is the charismatic one who they basically Sanguinius is hot yeah they kind of <laughs> they kind of recognize <laughs> again funny lord so tidbit as well character traits <laughs> There's a funny Lord tidbit we should mention as well. Uh, I probably haven't mentioned it so far. Ferris Manus literally has iron hands from uh, the tomb scorpion thing being melted onto his arms. Also, uh, the t Lord tidbit where Perturabo of the Iron Warriors asks, why is he such great uh, friends with Fulgrim? And it's the only time Ferris Manus ever laughed around another Primarch <laughs> other than Fulgrim. Because yeah, basically yeah. he just doesn't get it. Because Ferris Manus 
literally him and Fulgrim are such bros. They're like, they are vulnerable with each other. It's cool. It's not cringe. Am I um, right in thinking that he didn't like anyone calling him the Gorgon apart from Fulgrim? Like, yeah, because that was... That. It was like he a, liked that it, it, it intimidated yeah. people to be called that. But if, if one of his sons was like, right, Gorgon, he'd be like, <laughs> no, you <laughs> fucking don't. That's like that's like someone else referencing your mate's group chat, but they're not in it. So you know, like that's just like you got to stay out your damn lane. And um, the last bit of their Great Crusade lore was the battle with the Empress Children with the Diasporax, which like the well human slash Xenos fleets that were um, sort of roaming around, and basically this is pretty much the start of like, but the start, the heresy is about to start and they kind of up show the emperor's children in this last bit. Well, Fulgrim feels like they got up shown when Ferris Manus basically ends up destroying this fleet of non-compliant humans and aliens. And the heresy sort of will start shortly after, uh, Horus heresy law is one five. We know what happens with that. They yeah. basically, yeah, the Iron Hands sort of overextend, whereas the other two were trying to run back and retreat. Because basically, you know, the other Primarchs were like, "We need to, you know, the next wave's coming. We need to fall back." And he went, "No, I can get full grim. I'm close, bro." And <laughs> him and all the first company ran. You know, all the Terminators, the Terminators couldn't keep up. I feel so bad. Like Gabriel Santar <laughs> was like huffing it because <laughs> Iron Hand Terminators, by the way, <laughs> Iron Hand Terminators, <laughs> imagining the poor Maul go like. Dad, please, mate. <laughs> Dad. It, it doesn't. It really doesn't get across how like Iron Hand Terminators are massive because they have like they've got they, they have they don't need to carry guns in their hands because the guns on their backpack. You know what I mean? Mm. Oh, they're yeah. pretty. They are massive, but they so they try to keep up with poor Ferris. Ferris dies to Fulgrim. Very oh. sad. And uh, the Iron Hand. Even sadder that he actually wins the fight, but then the Lair Blade is like, ha ha ha! And it's like, yeah, he takes there's control a of Fulgrim. Yeah. There's a small. And then Fulgrim's like, no, 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 no. Oh, no. It's a small it's a little. Sword strikes. Yeah, it, they almost. Most people don't remember that part, which is Ferris is about to kind of kill Fulgrim, but then, like, the demon surges up and then sort of overpowers him. So he was kind of. I mean, to be fair, he kind of lost before. When he was he, trying he'd to been get... like stabbed in the chest, and then like he dropped he would... fire blade, yeah. and then he went to grab it, and then Fulgrim's like, "I don't want to kill him," and then the blade went. Ugh! And I meant yeah. when so you. when Fulgrim tried to re... Fulgrim tried to oh, recruit yeah, yeah, him, yeah. Yeah. he basically got knocked out by Fulgrim, and yeah. he was he was yeah, like so fight. embarrassed. He yeah. was so embarrassed. <laughs> Fulgrim bodies, dude. Fulgrim literally bodies. He uh, Fulgrim he's... haters cope and seethe. Fulgrim stole his uh, the hammer and them. knocked him out. <laughs> um but the iron hands at this point basically get shattered and so but funny enough even though the iron hands are the ones that overextended they actually of all the other shattered legions they get the most out so actually a few thousand of them are managing to run away there's a cool short story where actually some of them they actually formed a friendship with some world eaters during the great crusade and then they f see them again and they go yeah because they're, they're like yeah. the void combat with them and they see them again, they go, what the shit? And they have, they have the shields, don't they? And they're like, and then the world is like, shields are cringe now. Ah, yeah. Man, what's going on with you? Calm Iron down, Hands actually had down. like a phalanx sort of, they yeah. actually had good tactics. But again, when a world eater law happens and it can punch a custodies. <laughs> when he's like, well. Nicholsoning from Shining mm. going, ah. Ooh, Tom Warren, thank you, brother, for the uh, five yeah, bucks. Good doing the stream thank just you. in time to hear Fulgrim, I'm close, bro. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you, brother. Uh, sorry, I, I, this, is the, this is the most amount of law for all the Shattered Legion. That's why it's a bit longer than... Don't uh, Fulgrim all over my iron hands. <laughs> I'm Fulgrim. <laughs> oh, stop. Um, basically, the Sorry. Legion is pretty much broken, and this is where lots of new ideologies start to form. So, a lot of the different sort of groups, some of them don't even want to work together because they already they already have the clan system within a within a Legion shattered where their Primarch is dead. So they they don't really work together as well. A lot of them want yeah. to fall back onto. What previously was before Ferris was called an Iron Fathers Council, where like clan leaders would eventually decide something. So they actually had like a democracy in some way, and they wanted to do that. Whereas democracy. the character of yeah, democracy has failed. You're the chosen one. <laughs> no, <laughs> this Iron Father, boff. 
I, I do like to destroy the emperor's children, not join them. <laughs> <laughs> I do like how there's just like a lot of bickering as well. Where all the clans are like, hey, oi, Averni, where were you? It's like, we were on Istvan. That's why we're all dead. Oh, <laughs> and there's like a lot of just complaining and Shadrach's just there going, ah, nonsense. Isn't good, is it? Yeah. <laughs> So this is where the character Shadrach Medusin comes about. He's a Terran born, which they kind of do look down upon Yuck, a little bit. Yeah, the Iron Hands. Because <laughs> he's not, they has to get, all the Terrans had to get adopted into some of the clans. They're kind of seen as like, yo, you're latecomers. But uh, Shadrach Medusin sort of becomes a leader at this time because he basically says, listen, we're like an alloy that's been, we're, we're like a steel or a hammer that's been broken. Ferris is dead. Clearly our ideologies are wrong. And he says, we have the other Shattered Legions here. We have got Raven Guard and Salamanders. Let's, well, I think the quote was, let's alloy them to our steel to make ourselves stronger. So they basically start a guerrilla warfare fight. So they incorporate like um, guerrilla warfare specifically from the Raven Guard in a lot of places. They often use like the salamanders. To be fair, they don't use a lot of the salamander tactics in, in this time. <laughs> they mentioned it's particularly like, they're nice guys. They can stay. <laughs> the salamanders are particularly used as sort of like a backbone in a way for the legion. There's not as many salamanders. To be fair, quite a lot of them. Well, did because die. the thing is, it's like the Iron Hands had like the biggest losses, but they were also the biggest legion. So it's like there's still a lot. So yeah. and then the Raven Guard. There's not many, but they're really potent. So it's like I want to get in behind them and go. Oh, the uh, the thing. Oh. so Shadrach Medusin storyline is basically they end up pretty much really annoying the crap out of the traitor legion to the point where yeah they eventually would have a confrontation where the character Tybalt Mar of the Sons of Horus oh, that guy basically <laughs> the guy who sort of end up joining the Mournival really late like the latecomers you know like stand next to Abaddon going you know hey I'm one of you guys is like yeah sure. Uh, hmm. He does. The poor Shadrach Medusin actually does end up getting beheaded. So another another yeah. Iron Hand beheaded. There's also a weird <laughs> part where there's like a cult of the Gorgon formed here, where they basically find like a severed arm of Ferris oh. Manus and they attach it to like this weird mechanical doll and they create like a cult around it because their minds are so broken. Jeez. Yeah, it's pretty horrible and yeah. there's something and called... vulcan is like what is that yeah vulcan <laughs> finds that? vulcan they, they, they say to vulcan oh first manus lives come check this out and they're like oh, that's my man. mutilated brother's corpse <laughs> oh my uh, god it's Smashes not living it. very like, well you're not doing that in my presence guys jeez Please. and then there's a story called the keys of hell basically there's a technology found in the great crusade that first manus basically said Never use that. That thing is forbidden. Do not do it. Something called the Keys of Hell. It basically inverts your mind in upon itself and you kind of turn into like a walking Ugh. servitor. But you basically have the operational efficiency of a space marine. So they a lot of them did it to stop feeling the pain of what went through because oh. of Istvan. So there's an entire group you that... you can be dead. Yeah, you, you basically... You're, you're living... You're walking oh, good. dead. Jeez. Uh, Recycling. A, it is pretty... <laughs> They describe it in the book as a re like quite a, f a few of the other Iron Hands find the group that have turned the they call it the turning of the keys of hell. Yeah, it's and they basically look at them and they go, "Oh my god, what have you done? That's and horrific." Like in the ship, and they're like, "Why is it so warm?" And then they then they all disappear. And it's like, "Why is it so cold?" And they find them in the freezer, like, "Oh." Yeah, they're basically kept on ice. With them and he's like, what is that? And you're like, hmm. it's Iron Hand stuff. Don't worry, it's fine. <laughs> don't don't yeah, worry, like, bro. Jeez. It's pretty much the opposite. Like, Ferris Manus's whole thing was, all right, we'll do the Great Crusade, and then I'll, like, heal my sons in their, like, wounded soul. Yeah, like, their, get rid of their reliance on technology. Arms, you know, the, they call... This is where the problem... they The flesh is weak actually comes from something that Vulcan said, not actually what something Ferris said. Vulcan said... The flesh is weak, but deeds endure. So it's meant to be like the whole reason is like they do this war because they're building a future for humanity's golden age. So that there was so it was okay for them to like do all these things to their bodies in the name of something greater, and eventually they wouldn't have to. Mm -hmm. And then that basically never happened because all they could remember from Ferris's words were the flesh is weak. So all they so basically the Iron Hands just hate themselves a lot because mm -hmm. again they're and, the legion that failed at Isfahan. they they failed their primark they failed the imperium and ferris had bad. a diary and he was like dear diary um one day i'm, I'm gonna dead. take the metal off my arms and i'm going to do, make my sons understand that it's okay to be human it's okay yeah. to, to chill and be like you know what maybe an augmented laser eye socket isn't so cool he writes down his later 
he admits his own biggest weakness, which is the fact that he relies on his metal arms too much, and he, he gets he's embarrassed to tell anyone. Yeah. So, poor Ferris. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier about the. Don't mention. Don't don't call your freaking legion the Iron Hands. There, the Iron Hands. <laughs> yeah. the Iron Hands. Seriously. Iron hands. Oopsies. Poor bad. And I think <laughs> I mentioned goof. the early <laughs> big goofed it. Uh, oh, sad. Couldn't heal you. Oh, cringe. Uh, <laughs> no. Oh, sorry, the Leon Leon. Thank you again, brother. Thank you. Holy cow, man. He says, Holy I give God. it to Fulgrim about Ferris, but Dorn makes him look like a bitch. Really? I mean... What? Dorn... Fulgrim beats Dorn. Dorn admits that Fulgrim was going to kill him, and yeah, he but, didn't leave. like, what happened Dorn to the be Siege the of He got Sigismund and Dorn. Dorn yeah, but, be the but he left. He left because he was bored, and then Dorn later said, yeah, "Fulgrim okay, had but, us." Yeah, bro. I swear. I'm. Yeah, I'm but the Phoenix did. Lord of Cope. Yeah, bro. I left because oh, I was okay. bored. My favorite. Dorn, Dorn literally said that Fulgrim was gonna beat him if he didn't. Nah, leave. he's. It's just a to confidence fair, issue. My oh, favorite, okay. My favorite Fulgrim fight is him versus Gilliman. He gets Gilliman, and then a and Aeonid Feel, who's like the sergeant who becomes a captain. He's just like, run away, grab him, <laughs> let's get out of here. It's time to leave. <laughs> He has too many freaking arms. Run! Also, the moment you become a demon Primark, the moment you d you never take a W again. So, <laughs> Fulgrim yeah. taking any Ws at Unless all is pretty Mortaria. massive. I, I Angron did destroy was... that planet. Yeah, but then he got beat <laughs> up by the lion. So you know, it's yeah. <laughs> you yeah, don't you don't take a W by... against loyalist Primarchs usually. Mortarion got got an F from what Jagatai, Al <laughs> Drago, oh twice, my gosh. and. And Gilliman. the emperor, pretty much, yeah. Slash, slash, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the emperor says, "Kill him and kick him in the yeah, nuts." but when, but when Lorgar, but when Lorgar found him in the warp and he was with Nakari, he was taking something that was way different than L or W could even describe. So, mm. thank you for that, <laughs> GW. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier about Sex. Bion Henry Cos. He was <laughs> the guy who helped sort of discover how they traverse the warp, and he was the one with like Hibu Khan, and then he got they cut off a little. Horus Saxman's face. Yeah, and Hibu had his Vihander. And he was like, I, I mentioned that you earlier. Know what? Yeah. I like katanas. This is actually pretty cool. It's like, it's big, <laughs> isn't it? It's like, yeah, it's very big. Oh, the it's uh, the fact yeah, that, I actually, I'll say my rant to the end about <laughs> what they need to make for 40k tabletop. But the one of the last few characters is called Ortec Moore. I, I haven't actually read them for the full mm. uh, short story or book he's in. But it does mention like his role. Also, more was the guy earlier who I mentioned who would like duel people for fun, and a massive cock. Like he's just like yeah. nothing likable about him. He went on to form he's... another chapter after the heresy of like just the he's... worst of all he's the Iron Hands. The Red Talons. Yeah, they are literally described yeah. as the worst. And I think they destroy some world easy facilities. I think Andy, you might know a bit more about more. what does Ortec Moore do that is really horrific during the Horus Heresy. Um, I can't recall exactly, but I'm sure it's something to do with like acceptable losses of allies. <laughs> He's one of those oh, kind of guys. I think it was Ortec Moore. He wanted to find a weapon that was being kept by another shattered legion, and so they mm. ended up attacking their own loyalist brothers because they were basically yeah, like, yeah. "We need it." Who cares? We don't even care. Yeah, like he's, if we he's very survive. much just ends justify the means. I mm -hmm. don't care. He has like that, like heavily like tattooed face, and that look in his picture is just like, I'll cut <laughs> you. It's like yeah, that's a. He's got crazy eyes. Leave him alone. He looks that like man he, is nuts. He looks like he has yeah. always, in fact, been in prison. Like this guy <laughs> is intimidating, and um, that's kind of the end of like again like end of the heresy they kind of get split in there's just, there's barely any iron hands left and the ones that they do have there's so the ideologies like a lot of them either hate ferris like ferris mourn ferris or didn't never in the first there's quite a few of them who never in the first place Indifferent. agreed <laughs> agreed to the fact they should have someone who has central rule because again they were <laughs> medusans who don't like mm -hmm. serving under someone so when they were all put back into the iron hands they were just like divided and ruined. The last and bit I here, think, okay, so, and I was gonna Good. say, I think it's also sad that like Shadrach had like a proper like he was Terran born. The reason he's called Medusan is because he he renamed himself to be a son of Medusa, hence Medusan, son of Medusa. Mm -hmm. So he was like, I know I'm from Terra, I'm not from your world, but let's band together and like make the best out of a bad situation and then you know ah oh. <laughs> could have could have, could have <laughs> been the <laughs> could have been like the raptors version of like a legion or like a group with tactics wise but then that just 
got ruined, and, they and then were... Ortec more left him to die as well. Jeez. Yeah, one one of the other the character I mentioned earlier who stepped down to be his second in command, like an actual Iron he Father. Ab- After the he abandoned, gets obliterated, him. and he's like the last senior senior, and he's like his mentor. And he's like, "It's okay, Shadrach, I've got your back." Wink. Uh, <sighs> yeah. So the Iron Hands at this Jeez. at the end of the siege at the end of the Horus Heresy, they are break they are broken in more ways than you can think. They. Really, like none of them like themselves anymore because they are there. There are failures in like Lord. physiologically, <laughs> failures in ideology, and failures in achievement. So we suck. <laughs> they are pretty grim, dark. Um, bit of slight bit, of, just last bit post heresy law. Um, they only agreed to the Codex Astartes because they were offered Ferris Manus's skull. <laughs> uh, at the end of this, wow. basically, his his skull was retrieved by the same skull that Horus, when he was like going proper mad, was like, "Ferris, let me tell you something. I'm gonna be a great new emperor." <laughs> like, I just, I still find like my something in my body twinges every time I read that part where like Fulgrim just drops like the prime, like Ferris's like and it goes dead up. skull. Yeah. And like and then Horus goes like, plop, yeah. <laughs> and then like for for um, Horus says like the uh, like the the plucked out silver looking eyes are there like just hollow things judging him he's like mm. no, even fair, fa- even Horace goes like, oh, demon possessed this is fucked up mm-hmm. to be there. And and, like, uh, yeah i know that you know that i'm a demon and not actually fulgrim but yeah. plop and horse poor uh Tough. poor iron hands a lot of them <coughs> their whole legion basically again like i said earlier they basically decorate traitor ships from the entire thing <laughs> they're like basically i think they even say at the end of isan five like Loads of them are like their corpses are crucified and you know like they they, they take a the biggest of L's. Uh, post so again they post heresy stuff. They do get Codex started, but there's only like three because again there's barely any Iron Hands. But yeah. the Iron Hands do kind of slightly take on the structure of the Astartes, or the Codex Astartes. Codex. With a grain of yeah. Although, sorry, Codex his name, with uh, a bit of grain crazy of eyes from the Red Talons. He's just like. They kind of yeah, they grain of salt the codex, so they do have their own weird system. They have a they are led really. Their uh, chapter master is elected for periods of time, and then they have something called a um, iron council, where essentially like old dreadnoughts and old members of the legion are like plugged into a computer. To and they to also venerate anything. dreadnoughts more. They're, they're like white scars. Ooh, dreadnought. Ooh. Iron Fathers are like, I can't wait to get mutilated. So I get <laughs> that that Dread, thing's so dreadnoughts cool. Oh, to I them. want to be a dreadnought when I grow up. <laughs> dreadnoughts to them are like being v- VTubers to Colin. So <laughs> not astray. But essentially, like, oh, it is the yeah, ideal... I don't want to be a VTuber. <laughs> it is the uh, ideal form. They, they, All right, well, like, fair enough. They look at dreadnoughts and they're like, look at the angle on that. That is kinky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but um, yeah, Ooh. technology, they also, oh. in the modern 40, 41st millennium, they don't actually worship the emperor. They are parts of the Mechanicus. They, as in, like, they worship the machine god. So it's they actually they, they praise the Omnissiah machine god mostly. So they're not actually kind of, they're the only ones that redo really that as well, I think. Maybe some other ones maybe venerate in some way, but well, and being a I mean, being a tech the, priest the, is big. The sons like, of Medusa are more like there was a big schism, and the Iron Hand successors were like, um, "Are we going to be like Emperor is the Omnissiah, or the Omnissiah is a separate entity?" And then there was this, and then they were like, "All oh, right, 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 right." And then sons of Medusa were like, "Oh, we're a weird bespoke chapter that was made from the conflict, and they have all the best gear." And they're like. That's a pretty good deal. Say yeah. Also, their um, organization is pretty weird. Again, like, they still have the clan system, although many of the old clans have fallen. Only, I think, Clan of Verme is uh, f- remaining. And that's yeah. the first company kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. The and then, like, You're all weak. You can't be clans anymore. Also, there's a weird thing now where in the, the last the last thing is, which is something called the Forge Chain, where previously you were just like assigned to clans or you were born to clans on, in the Great Crusade area. Whereas now you actually, as an Iron Hand, you will have a, you will join all the clans at one point. So you actually have like a sort of, I can't remember what the word is, but you have like a short stint. <laughs> well, I say short, like a few decades in each clan. And basically each clan has its own sort of iconography or symbol that you're attached to your forge chain, which is essentially saying, here's my badge of honor. I learned all the things I need to know from that clan. But by, so by the end of it, you end up looking like a machine thing because one clan ends up putting a um cybernetic like 
spinal imprint. One of them gives you like a technological uh, imprint into your brain. So by the end of it, you are basically a tech priest <laughs> <laughs> by any means. And the lo my last rant, as I've wanted this so bad, <laughs> which is Iron Hands, they don't need characters like that. They just need one thing, which is they need the Hellfathers, which is a unit where the Hellfathers are from the Keys of Hell short, short story. The Keys of Hell is where they basically went to, you know, they lost their minds. They still exist within the um, Iron Hands, but they're basically the guardians of the Iron Council. They are essentially things that were human, but are now like machine things in, like interred within their Terminator armor, and they should carry around as Y handers, and that's my rant over. Like that's the Iron Hands. Hands. <laughs> but less cringe. Yeah, it sounds like Rubric Marine type of stuff. But they smell yeah. of oil and rotten meat. Oh, okay. There's a cool. There is a cool bit in the Why one you book. Describe it like that. There's only, there's only <laughs> one cool bit in uh, one book where they one of the Iron Hands and like a human, they actually just spot a Hellfather, and even the Iron Hands are scared of the Hellfathers because they basically hmm. go, that thing has no human emotion whatsoever in it, and that thing uh, the, when the humans walk around them, they basically just like look around at people and they kind of turn like sort of Terminators, and they absolutely should be a unit because they would be ridiculously cool. And that's Iron Hands. Hopefully, people like Iron Hands a bit more now. <laughs> Some respect cool. on my uh, my grind for Iron Hands lore. The uh, last one, I think, Andy though is uh, well, do they even exist? Can we see their lore? Yeah, okay. seriously. Um, this is going to be even brisker than my Salamanders one. To be fair. Um, so yeah, let's They're talk about. Here. Can we get a car car in the chat? So uh, all, all Shattered Legion is basically Iron Hands law. So that, that's all we have. <laughs> Pretty let's much. have it. Um, but let's let's and again, like the the trouble with especially researching the Stealth Legion, <laughs> they don't really leave many tracks. So okay, so Great Crusade. Um, so the Raven Guard weren't known as the Raven Guard before Korax, obviously, but we don't know what they were really called. So they were just the 19th. And the 19th were basically the assassins of the Emperor. Not like Alpha Legion assassins, where it's, we'll leave no trace. It was like, oh, Terran Warlord, will you join the Imperium? No. <laughs> Even How about and now? Worse. It's, mm -hmm. it's that kind of like assassination. Um, Sounds less of an assassination, more of like a, a mafia shakedown. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Raven Guard in uh, Unification, like, I'm going to give them enough where can refuse. Anyway, um, so they were like the assassins of the Emperor, covert operations, reconnaissance, but not in an Alpha Legion way where it's cringe. Um, they were drawn primarily from the Asiatic dust fields of terror, and it would be two centuries, so 200 years, before they were reunited with their Primarch. That's all I really can say about Unification Wars, they're just too good at hiding. They didn't leave any trace of what they did. I think Horus used him as like his own sidearm at some point. Oh, sorry, oh. I got too far ahead of myself. He, uh, so, he used them as something. Um, he did He did that, and Eli just doing something. What are you doing, Eli? No, I was just getting in camera. Write my, little, write my little message, my mom, you meant to, that I... Uh... About going to class. <laughs> nice. Uh, um, so yeah. So basically, the most interesting thing about chat, I'm getting to that. Anyway, so the most interesting thing is like, okay. So Raven Guard. Let's talk about their primer. Corvus Corex. Never more, never more. Car, car, car. So he was found on the moon of Lysaeus, which is in orbit of the Forge World of Kiavar. Now Kiavar is ruled by a tech guild. So imagine an aristocratic version of the Mechanicus. And they have a workforce. And for the resources they need for the factory on Kiavar, they enslaved the people on their orbiting moon of Lysaeus, which is a mining colony sort of thing. So a bunch of people, they were like, we found this goth baby. It's like, okay, cool. <laughs> we found this like hot topic child. Found <laughs> Goth that's very baby. funny. <laughs> Even there, he had the eyeliner on and everything. You're like, that's oh a goth gosh. baby. And it's he's like, cool. DNA. <laughs> and they're like, cool, this is cool. I can't believe he's already got like long hair. But like, what's going on? Oh, clearly, he is our savior. We don't own any eyeliner. How is this happening? So clearly, <laughs> he's our savior. We need to keep him away 
from the tech guilds. And so they basically like hid him under the floorboards and they nurtured him and a, and a band of people like, I can't remember her name, but there was a lady who looked after him for a baby and she went on to become they literally like, did hide him under commanders. the floorboards <laughs> as well. That's so funny. Yeah, actually, yeah. Like, that's in the book. They actually hide him. Um, they literally do. <laughs> and there's one point where the guards go in and the like kindly old man is like, I don't have a goth baby. Why would I have? <laughs> Why would I have one of those? And they, and they do like a proper like, Looking, do and you have a golf baby? <laughs> and they shine the torch directly at Korax, and he's there, like, <laughs> and they can't see him. And they're like, that's weird. And it turns out Korax has this ability called Wraith Slipping, where you can look directly at him and not see him. Um, much like me in the dating market. Jeez. Anyway, so, Jeez. Ha, ha, ha. I'm a Warhammer guy. What can I say? <laughs> anyway. So basically, I think one of us is married. I think I think, I think that doesn't have much more. Yeah, but he's built like a bodybuilder. That's like the guns get girls, as they say. Anyway, <laughs> the most important thing to remember is that Goth Baby Corax is like, oh, I'm actually quite good at this hiding thing, isn't it? Nice. And the kindly people of uh, Lysaia are like, oh, that's that's handy. Hiding, as far as hiding a baby goes, oh, that's a good thing to have. So they manage to hide him. And as time goes on, they're like, oh, bloody hell, he's growing quick. How many sandwiches has he eaten? 20 a day. Jeez, he's grown up fast. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, we've got... Uh, bastard. Hello, Looty McShooty. We've got a donation. Oh, hello, brother. Thank you. Looty McShooty, Ooh, veteran thanks. of law crimes, $4.99, saying, new DLC unlock, doge on bed. Congratulations. But still messy. And when are you guys going to do an AOE Warhammer stream? Never. I can't make the bed when the dogs are on it. Oh, also, man. the dog has moved. Been like, what did you say? Yeah. What, what is what is dog's name? Uh, the brown one is Jazz, and the black one's Athena. <laughs> Everyone in the chat say hello, Jazz and Athena. It's funny, oh, one's called Jazz and one's called Mild oh. Jazz. <laughs> we'll do we'll do an AOE Warhammer stream oh. when Colin gets the uh, the rousing for it. I guess probably. I assume. The what? The rousing. <laughs> There's no e before that. It's, what does that mean? Like you, you roused, you waking oh. up type of thing. I don't know. What, what is it, Age of Empires? Age of Eternity? What? Age, oh, sorry. I thought he, I thought that was Age of Sigmar. AOE. I don't know if you mean AOE. Area of Effect Warhammer stream. <laughs> Last radius. Did you mean Age of Sigmar? I don't know. I have to go to class though. Feels bad. You know, has to uh, actually Shut get. Up. Studies. He gets, he gets uh, to miss all of that Raven Guard lore. That I, oh no! Jake was like, I just noticed the like, yeah, proper Raven Guard dog. Yeah, um, hiding well, in plain sight. Have fun Thank talking you, about the Raven Guard for the next ten minutes, fellas. We planned <laughs> this. Next this was all planned. Yeah, this works. Um, I... <laughs> uh, um, sorry, fellas. So oh, farewell, all right, all right, love you long you time. Okay. Not dead. <laughs> bye bye. Vanish bye. just like Raven Gar Law. I will miss you all. I'll be I see you. you all next Friday. Bye. Bye. Uh, now we talk about the man. real Raven Guard Law. <laughs> yeah. You can't so do Raven Guard Law without someone disappearing. Anyway, so Sakorax so managed to hide in uh in the under the floorboards. Of Kiev, uh, not Kiev, of Lysaeus, until one day he went, you know what? Slavery is cringe. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I, for some reason, I'm way taller than everyone, and I'm well stronger than everyone, and I'm malnourished as heck. So I don't get how this works, but I'm also really good at hiding. Let's do a bit of sneaky sabotage. And over a few years, they managed to band together and they used, and they, and then they used like, Hit and run tactics and sabotage and espionage, but not in a cringe way. It's literally the C Nana's like video the Alpha Legion. with hmm? the Morgan the Morgan Freeman C Nana's video. If anyone <laughs> remembers that, it's literally yeah. that. It's like I'm oh, creeping in your and Caleb <laughs> Collins play Nine Inch Nails exactly. So it's like you're getting in step. Do, 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 do. So that's going on in the background, and Quark is like, "Slaver is cringe." Bomb, 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 and eventually they like orbitally bombard Kiavar. Because they're like, well, we're up here in, on the moon. Screw these guys. Let's just, like, kill them all. So they do Fair that. Enough. And the Emperor is watching this and going, oh, that's good. I like that. Um, and then the Emperor's like, you did good, kid. You did, you did good, pig. 
And he goes, yeah, um, I like your Hot Topic aesthetic. Here's the 19th Legion. Funny fact, they're also like good at assassinations and espionage. Who to thunk? Um, and so Korax goes, you know what, Lysias, I don't like that name. I'm going to spruce it up. We're going to call this moon Deliverance. Ah, oh, isn't that nice? And then he is known as the Liberator of Deliverance. They put their fortress and monastery there. He takes up the 19th Legion and goes, all right, here's the deal, Emperor. Um, I'll be, I'll be your commander. I'll be your general, but I'm not going to do any of that cringe slavery or oppression or tyranny because that's bad. And the emperor goes, well, we'll talk about that later. It's like, okay, that's good enough for me. And <coughs> we'll get back Imperium. to that. You will get back. To, we'll, we'll put a pin on that. Um, and so after liberating uh, Deliverance and to an extent Kiavar, um Korax renames the 19th Legion as the Raven Guard because there's a theme, funnily enough. And they conduct compliances across the stars, and they are well known for hit and run tactics, liberating oppressed people like the Emperor. I just imagine him being like, right, we need to find like all the planets where there's like a grievance with some oppression or tyranny, and be like, Korax can go there and there and there, just to not get on his bad side. Um it's the no, I'm Spartacus, but then no one yells it. They just whisper it. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm exactly. <laughs> just going to put that on repeat, like uh, the, the best her. best of. Um, and so, yeah. Caw, caw. <laughs> caw, caw. And that's basically it. Uh, there is something to note that uh, there, was a, there was an incident called Gate 42, where Horus, I believe it was Lehman Russ and Korax were to do a compliance. And for some stupid reason, well, I know why, Horus is like, I'm going to do his, uh, for, you know, his... Hal, you've listened to the audiobooks, right? Of the first couple of books? Mm -hmm. you? Is this a good impression of us? It's like, Corax, I'm going to make sure that we get compliance of this planet. And I have a very special job for you. You're going to attack them head on at the gate. It's like, hang on a minute. My legion's not good at that. We're all about... It's a bit more... It's a bit less Mr. Garrison... South Park and a bit more <laughs> <laughs> charming. There's pretty okay. is, is somewhat okay. there, yeah. Hey there, children. Yeah, mate, okay. he speaks from the knee. <laughs> We're gonna go take four gay forty two. Okay. I'm the warmaster. Mm. Okay. Um but yeah, it's, it's okay. case <laughs> Horus has always had a problem of being like, My boys are the best, therefore I don't want them to die as much as everyone else's. So I'm gonna hang back a minute and Korax can take the brunt of this. And like Lehman Russ is like Ah, oh, we'll run at the gate. And you're like, okay, fair enough. He's he's game, and they're kind of good at that. But Korax is like, mm, I don't know, and like loads, loads of Raven Guard die. But at the same time, Korax is not a hundred percent a nice person because he hates Terrans. He's like, oh, phew, you from Earth, phew, cringe. Mm -hmm. So he basically sent all his Terran Astartes at the front line of that battle to try and cull them. And so he was a bit ah. like, oh, oh, Chorus, you. Oh, how dare you kill so many. But he was also like, oh, that's a problem solved. Um, so, yeah, I'm a bit like mm, about Korax being a nice person in that such situation. But either way, Great Crusade, meh. That's all they kind of do. Isvan 5 happens. They have among the possibly the single most smallest legion, but they also have... A fair bit of losses, but they aren't. They're 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 very adept at Istvan Five for escaping because that's their whole shtick. It's like if you want to survive this engagement, Raven Guard are going to do the best. And so when Istvan happens, they kind of get split off. Uh, Bran Neve, one of the lieutenants, gets a vision through a mortal Imperial Guard commander that, oh no, the Raven Lord's in trouble, and he rescues Korax and. Like a bunch of the Astartes. He literally sends a raven to go. And he get literally it. sends a raven and he's like, Hi, Dad. And he's like, What are you doing here? And he's like, I don't know. And they all escape, which is good. Uh, but Korax leaves the, the survival effort. And that's kind of all they do. Literally, it's just the stuff we've already covered. Raven Guard are just there occasionally. They're very potent. They're very good at just being like, Dead, dead. And then they disappear. They do have, they have like lighter armor. It's not their big shtick. Like a pattern of 
armor named after them, I think, during the Great Corvus Crusade, Mark yeah. Six. The Beaky. The Beaky is there because the they were the ones who tested it because they thing. were like, mm, it works. It, it's, on, it's on brand. They were like, oh, that's quite chic. Ooh, Depends how strongly you feel about uh, <laughs> aggressively pointed armor. And then there's the space where it was like, do you like my design? It's just the... Oh, the wolf. The wolf, the wolf. They remade that. Leaving that cringe. Complaints. Like, oh, no, it's not. It's uh, not. Looting with Shruti. He does another dono. Thank you, brother. He's put, um, well, people from Earth are cringe, and he's so well up within his right. So, yeah, and I got my games mixed up, and I was a, it was a total war thing. Basically. Yeah, he was thinking total war yeah. with an AOE. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. What else can I say about the Raven Guard? Not much, apart from the characters. So, uh, Let's go through it. Like the main one to talk about, the premier character is Nikona Sharokin. He was deployed at Isvan 5. He was a really good Wraith slipper, which means he was really good at doing that whole like looking directly at him and you can't see him. Some people reckon he was taught personally by Korax to do that. Because again, he was on deliverance when they were liberating, and he must have been like 15 or whatever, be like, I'll chuck, I'll chuck a bomb at the, the Mechanicus. Like, fair enough. Um so he was really good at that. And some people speculate he was great. Um, he was rescued from a fight with, I believe it was Fulgrim. He got wounded. And Sabiq Whalen from the Iron Hands grabbed him and was like, you're not done yet. Come here. Mm. Get in the ship. And Christ was like, oh, seeing stars. and Still uh, still that mural in... Mu- mural? Mu- mural? Mu- How do I say it? Like a one mural? on wall? A mural. M- mural? Mural. Mu- mu- Muriel. muriel. <laughs> Which one is it? <laughs> a mural. A muriel in um I said it earlier in the video. It's oh, yeah. a muriel, muriel in um Medusa still has muriel. that iconic <laughs> mural. It has that iconic moment now. where uh Sharokin is saved by Cybek Wayland. It's like a yes. they that's the only thing they have of like the Isfan massacre is like it's pretty badass because I'm pretty sure they're being attacked by Fulgrim. And I just like the idea of Sabi going, Come on, you in the ship. Well, looks at the go. prime and goes and then he nope in and pilots it um and again they, they have an interesting relationship where it's like for the rest of the horus heresy sabik and nikona they work together like i have i have strengths and weaknesses you have and they complement each other so well so like to give you an idea um when they went to assassinate there was a meeting i think it was fulgrim horus and uh Paterabo, possibly or maybe mortarian one of their assassination attempts. I think it was Paterabo because it was the Angel of Stars. Paterabo and Fulgrim, yeah. Yeah. In that the so, theater. There's a point where it's two of them, Sabik and Nikona. Sabik is spotting, Nikona is sniping. He shoots Fulgrim in the head. And Paterabo's like, like, surprise Pikachu face. And this is just two like, Astartes. And then they're like, run. So they run away <laughs> from their position. And there's a bit where it's like the the book is, I'm paraphrasing, but it's like Nikon, Nikona was weaving and sweeping between the lines, Emperor's children and world and I'm worried. Okay? And, and it's just like, and then Wayland was running straight <clears throat> forward. Stomping. Again, he's carrying a lot stomp, of equipment. Stomp. Leave my boy alone. <laughs> and the fun thing is it's like finesse and brawn. And there's like a bit where it's just like, and then sh- Nikona was weaving, darting between cover. And then Sir Balin went Iron Man pose and punched him. In the, and like, that's why they work so well together. It's like, I'm the kind of dumb brawn, but also I'm a logistician and a pilot, and you're well good at shooting and stabbing. And so they work really well together, and they're kind of like the legendary like buddy cop duo of the Horus Heresy. <laughs> um, so we love Nikona. He he, he headshot a Primarch. Uh, he also did something very important, but I'll, I'll leave it. He also killed Lucius the Eternal before he was cringe, or more cringe. He made him the Eternal, technically. He, kind of, yeah. The, the prophecy's like, Lucius can only die to someone who doesn't care a single yeah. bit about him. And Nikona just he's a he's a hard killer. He doesn't really Yeah, they have a duel and Nikona goes like one sword here, one sword here. And this is before he's all like eternal. And Lucius is like eh. and then there's like a, an offline where like Nikona's like, I feel nothing killing you. And Paul's and that's like, Oh, we could really use you now, mate. I'm just saying. He doesn't use how many uh, people have died since. He doesn't use lightning claws like a lot of the other ones. He actually uses two dual black swords, doesn't he? Yeah, like swords, so it's a bit yeah. different. Also, yeah, he's a he, different. 
He has a weird habit, though. His weird thing is, like, he's so Raven Guardy that he just sneaks around the ship like the Iron Hands have. Well, he has a conversation with Alpharius, because Alpharius wounds Sabiq, and then he wounds a bunch of the orphans of war. And then he's like, and Alpharius is like, don't even try fight me. You'll lose. And Lycona's like, probably. And they have a conversation. And he's yeah. like, I'll let you go because I like you. But just so you know, I'm going to, like, tell you all my evil plans. And Lycona's like, yeah, we're cool. And Alpharis like, oh, he like walks away basically. Cool. I think Alpharis goes like, so you're not gonna, you're not even gonna try, but nope, just gonna. Just, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Is stupid. He's like, Preci no thanks. I'm he not goes stupid. like, he literally goes, appreciate it, boy, and like the man fades who out. headshot a Primarch was like, nope, not gonna try and kill a Primarch. It's like, yeah, you don't have distance this time. Um, yeah. Other than that, other characters we've got Agapito and Bran Neve. I've heard some people. I did a video on Agapito, and people were like. In Spanish, I think it is. Agapito might be another word for Willy, which is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Agapito. Uh, so these two are brothers from uh, Lysaeus. They were in the salt mines alongside Corvus, being like, oh, I want to be free. And they became, uh, so it was, uh, I believe it was Bran. No, Agapito led the Talons and Bran led the Raptors. Uh, Bran saved the Raven Guard from Istvan. And Agapito, I think led the raptors who were like the genetically engineered crazy uh the marines. the the new space marines that the alpha legion yeah. sabotage the alpha they legion sabotage the made them more like chaos the half yeah, crow like, half and Bran was like <laughs> and agapita was like i still love you because you're good boys but they were like my arms, my arms. <laughs> they basically I love you corvo's so accidentally the right place. he accidentally made um what they called the uh, not possessed, but the raptors. No, the ones where like if a space marine gets annoyed, annoys the chaos gods too much, they make him a chaos spawn. They basically wow. accidentally made sort of Raven God spawn. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, other than that, there's also Gareth Arendi. Gareth was in the later stages of the Horus Heresy, the the Primarch's bodyguard. He's called a Shadow Warden. Uh, he would later become the Chapter Master of the second founding Black Guard. Here's the thing about Gareth, he's a very naughty boy. During the Istvan V atrocity, he intentionally led Salamanders and Iron Hands into traps so they die and he could protect his men. He's that kind of guy. Um, but that said, he saved Korax's life during the Day of Vengeance against Fabius Bile's new men. So even though he's a dick, he knows what he's doing. So he kind of got a free pass. Uh, last character, Nerat Kirin, Terranborn Shade Captain, Terranborn, and Krux went, Oh, I feel the racism coursing through my veins. And it's like, Oh, he's from Terra. <laughs> Korax, you naughty man. He's like, Cringe. And so after Gate 42, even though Nerat Kirin didn't do anything, he was like, Right, get out of my sight. Go away. You didn't die like you were supposed to. Um, so he was sent to the Ghoul Stars, like one of the worst places in the 41st millennium to ever be in. And he forms the piratical Black Shield warband known as the Ashen Claws. And in current era, the Ashen Claws are the guys who basically supply weapons and armaments to the Carcaridons. Just a fun little mention. He's like, oh, he's a cool character. He knew what he was doing. He was good. He was like, but it, it is also worth mentioning, like during the Horus Heresy, he he was part of the uh, the destruction of Nostromo. Uh, he killed the coward of the Night Lords, Caron Ophion, I think. But he also killed Loyalist because he was like, I don't care anymore. So that's kind of the Raven Guard. Who's edgy the, there's one Raven Guard who Sevatar has like a loyal, like he broke the mind of the Raven Guard and cut his tongue out. Oh, and the, he made him the Raven, as they call him. Yeah, I can't remember his name. Sevatar basically made himself like a Raven Guard friend. Yeah, there's a Raven Guard serving in the Night Lords during the Horus Heresy, and I can't remember his name, but he's just known as the Raven because it's like the of course. Um, and in 40, 40, 40 k that the Raven Guard are there. They sure are Raven Guard. They are in the Damocles <laughs> Crusade. Shadow Sun beats them. Yeah, <laughs> and then the White Scars get in to get it done properly because that's what the White Scars do. They are there the, is they are stealth. Whatever version of stealth space brains are, <laughs> essentially. They've got that cool art where it's the 
them, the the White Scars and the Raven Guard, like back to back fighting yeah. Tao. Uh, Kosaro, Kosaro yeah. and Shrike. That's that's cool art. Yep. We sure sound excited about it, don't we? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's cool art. That's about. Unfortunately, all the... they are. They don't really have much. They don't really have novels. They don't have anything that. Again, they probably out of all the Shattered Legions came off it like the worst in terms yeah. of like, from a law perspective. It's just hard because with again, like we mentioned, I think it's like really early on in this video, someone said, "What would you give the Raven Guard?" Again, like basically depth, flaws, character things to actually kind of rally around in a way i think you know like even some like the ultramarines their whole big thing is like they are just they, they, they do one thing kind of well but there's nuance within that one thing but, the raven but, god yeah. just do the one thing still but the thing is as well the, the ultramarines are like the good boys where it's like they are literally the uh what's the term not cadets they're the um oh not like soldier boy but like um Scout, yeah. scout, scout, boy. Yeah. Boy scouts. Scouts. the boy scouts. Of I, your soldier boy is uh probably not what you were. No, it's what I was, it was like in my head. It was like around not that. Not him. He's not. No. He's not a boy scout, from what I've heard. Um, yeah, they're the boy scouts of 40k, and that's fair enough. That's what they're about. But Raven guards just say, like, "I'm a sneak in." They are the scout from TF2 going, "Hello, gentlemen," and then they disappear. Um, Gentlemen. the only other thing I've got to talk about is the Sisyphean, but that's all there is to say really about the Shattered Legions. Yeah, I think we should go, go for it. Yeah. I'll be brief. So, main characters in the Sisyphean or the Orphans of War, War Band, Sissy Femme, sorry, not me. the Sissy Femme, Sissy Femme boys. This. So, you've got Ulrak Branfam, he was the captain of the 65th Clan Company, he was massively wounded during the dropsite massacre, he was saved. But then the survivors were like, oh, here's this venerated captain of the Iron Hands. Uh, we need a dreadnought. We got any dreadnoughts? And the answer was no. Shit. Right. And they were like, oh, you know that like spooky looking door over there? What's in there? And they were like, oh, this is where we keep the, um, <laughs> the heart of iron. And the salamanders were like, oh, that's cool. Uh, what does that do? It's like, mm. They basically put this thing on Ulrak's body. It regrew his organs, but he was in agonizing pain as it happened, and it was very slow. And for the most Ugh. part, he, he was just like there going... Argh. They had to put him and in a fridge. They, like, they just shot they threw him in a fridge. <laughs> pretty much. And they were like, Ulrak, can you get some advice? He's like, Argh. go left, then right, then up, down, up, down. Cool? Yeah. And that was kind of his existence for a while. And um, eventually they realized, oh, it is regrowing his organs, but it's killing him. So we should like probably get him off this. Uh, luckily, I should say luckily, fortunately, they were attacked by the Iron Warriors Nimbus children. And Karashi Bombastus, which is a great name, was a dreadnought from the Iron Hands who got killed. And they were like, that'll do. We'll take his chassis, we'll put Ulrak in it. And the artwork for him is really harrowing because it's like his bare chested, like no leg torso embedded into it with the heart of iron. It's like, Ugh. and it's like, it's like that Robocop scene where they take it all apart and he's just like a torso like that. Uh, but they put him in that. So I don't know why in the Sons of Selenar he's there in full plate. It's like, mm. anyway, um, yeah, he's in charge of the war band. He's pretty cool. Uh, Spoilers, everyone other than Nikona Sharokin from the Raven Guard die. Moving on, um, Cadmus Tyro, he's the second in command, the equerry to Ulrak. He led the war band when Ulrak was going for a long time. Uh, he also inherited his cool, like, mechanical bird, which is fun, uh, called Garuda. Uh, Ignatius Newman was an Iron Hand who was made deaf by the noise marines so that was bad but then they you know we mentioned about the first noise marine uh various virosian mm -hmm. they they met again and he went boom, 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 boom. and then he was like i'm deaf mate I don't, get, I don't care and he volkite cannoned him to death which is kind of fun that like oh my superpower is i'm deaf cool um sabiq whalen we mentioned he's really cool um, don't need to say much more about that other than he's a badass. Iron Father Fematica, 
was technically the most superior rank of all the Sisyphean crew, but he took a more, you know, supervisory role. Uh, he basically, the, the, the Sisyphean crew went to Luna during the Siege of Terror to get the Magna Mater, which is the material components of the Primarchs, to stop the, uh, the traitors from getting that. During, like, their fight, he kind of went, he did, he did that um, Carter thing, Colin, where he went just like, give him hell. Carter out. That's basically what um, what Thematica did. He was like, "I'm in the ship. Good luck, boys." Bang. Um, it's crazy. Like in the middle of the horror terrors, they just have like a pirate crew storyline, <laughs> <laughs> and their whole thing is to, their whole yeah. thing is like to go around and just sort of annoy the traitor Primarchs quite mm. a lot. Oh, this is just, this is straight up like a pirate crew in the middle of yeah. Horus. Although it is interesting that like Corex gets special treatment where the Emperor has like a special place and like you're my weird like ace in the hole, like if ever I need like something really weird, I'm gonna give it to you. Um and yeah, Atesh Tasa is the only salamander of the warband. He attended to the wounds of the warband. Um he really got on with the iron iron hands because they were good at crafting, but he also has a really sad death where he's wounded during their procurement of the magna mater and he sees vulcan and he has that like uh hallucination where vulcan's like i love you he's like, i love you too dad mm -hmm. uh, he's like oh dad and then he dies he's like, oh uh, atesh um and yeah nikona is the only one who survives everyone else dies he is the noble six not really he's the master chief of the of the of the gang because he survives Hell everyone yeah. else dying um, oh. He procures the Magna Mater. He goes into stasis and is sealed away. And obviously, the loyalists retrieve the Magna Mater because it's mentioned in later lore. But we don't know what happens to Nikona. So some people are like, maybe he'll come back because he's the only cool Raven Guard. Well, Belisarius Call Shrike. should have found him at least. Like he, Belisarius Call needed that to create the Primaris. So he's he's at least they've interacted. Yeah, but that, but that obviously went to Belisarius first. So Belisarius had to find him originally. So it's like, yeah, I mean, maybe we'll find out in the scout. So he could have just found the gene seed in a hole somewhere. I think no, you think. He, oh, I think I had a comment on a video I'm uploading soon where a question was: um, Is the kind of Sherikin basically Alpha Primus? The whole. Gene father. Oh, Colin's di diabeting. <laughs> the moment. Uh, I'll, I'll take care of that shortly. He is. There's like a whole Alpha Primus plot with Belisarius Call cool going at the moment, and it says he looks like a Raven Guard. So yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, Alpha, Alpha Primus still has that whole like I've had a sheltered life, but I love my dad, even though I don't show it. Like, oh, good boy. But yeah, it's just a case of like he's a, he's one of those loose ends where it's like Raven Guard have one character in 40k which is shrike who's the chapter master and even then there are technically other characters but no one gives a shit other than shrike we could use some raven guard characters and and nikona is like the obvious like he's right there guys he's right there put him in the scouring go on he's like he's shot a primark he had a natter with alpharius He's the last man standing of what? the orphans of war. Can we not give him some more stuff to do, please? He's right there. He just went. He did. He did he the is end cool of Halo books. Three when he went. Wake me when you need me. He literally did that. Can we please? He is quite divisive though, because a lot of people either say he's a bit too like, um, like a bit Mary Stew. Mary yeah, Stew. Like he, Stu. he doesn't seem to lose. Yeah, ever. but that's fine as long as that's his thing. I mean, as long as he does it with style, I don't mind that he... If he's fighting people like Lucius, I don't mind. If he dies at the hands of, like, I don't know, Khan, fair enough. Like, oh, it doesn't matter. You, you were studying the blade while I was studying violence. Like, fair enough. Like, cool. But we need some Raven Guard characters, guys. I'm just saying. It's like, I mean, we need Eldar. <laughs> please. <laughs> yes. Please. Please. Oh God! Please, please. Uh, awesome. No one from Tom Warren here. He says, um, two uh, bucks. Thank you, brother." He's put Thank you. gene seed in a hole is how you get uh, oh, Reman Cyrodiil. Wow, Elder Scrolls. Wow, wow, wow. wow. But yeah, that's all I was going to say about the uh, the orphans of war. They're kind of cool. I think I think that's all of the Shattered Legions lore, basically. That yeah, well, pretty much, apart from going over every. Um, 
well there, there might be their own video at some point each of them so but that's mm. kind of their main arc though uh let's anyone else's Colin Jeff well first of all Colin you have to pick a favorite <laughs> I, I, I do do I yeah well least favorite Sal- maybe. salamanders I like oh salamanders. come on I'll, 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 all that iron hand lore I gave I, I look and it means nothing I, <laughs> I I'm sorry I I I, I just don't care <laughs> I'm just a lonely man out here begging someone to like Yandin. I feel like that. <laughs> I, I'm used to being disappointed and no one ever liking the Eldar. I've accepted it. I've accepted that outside of my audience, no one gives a shit. <laughs> and even within that audience, most people don't give a shit. Oh. To be fair, that's most of, the, most of all the Iron Hands lore, apart from two books, which mm. kind of end. Like, it starts and it ends, and there's nothing more to it. Um, there, I will give them that if I had to. No, and I can't even give them that. I nah, would just join fine. Mechanicus if I it's, wanted to cut my bits fine. off. Mm, but you don't have to. But you can look. You can be a bit cooler though. No, you can still be a space marine. No, I'm gonna. I'm gonna fight you on that. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> I guess you can just be a tech priest. Be a tech priest to of another <laughs> legion or just, uh, chapter. I don't want to be a tech marine. I want. To, I'll just be a tech priest. Mm. I don't want to get my rocks off holding incense over. a damn bolter <laughs> we, we have a difference of opinion <laughs> fair enough um i guess if people made it this far uh do like and subscribe thank you guys so much for <laughs> listening along and for all the donations that happened during it uh thank again we are on spotify so you've got to listen to us offline if you're and we're also on yeah. amazonmusic.com oh we are that's pretty cool yeah. um again thank you so much for watching and if you made it this far likes please <laughs> Last, <laughs> desperation please help us. the legions were shattered so you could like this video um <laughs> probably not though and with that being said though i think uh that's it for today's episode colin Peace, has guys. suffered enough space marine law yeah enough like, space marine law. involved <laughs> my brain hurt <laughs> there was no xenos re- i mentioned eldar once i think <laughs> yeah he did it was, was the, one of them dumb move like, let's go was, for empathy from it was them Ferris getting angry Manus. at ferris for not listening <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Seems makes sense. Uh that being said, yep. Thank you guys so much for listening and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Bye everyone. Take Bye. care everyone. Have a good one. Bye. <laughs>